Oh, man. I'm lighting up. What is up, people? If you can hear me and if you can see me, hit me with a let's go in the comments. I hope I fixed my mic. It's a new mic and the volume was too high. So it was it was booming. In, I think in my last YouTube, YouTube video, I had some uh, a little bit of echo. So hopefully uh, the audio is better now. If it's what is up, Joyce, good to see you here, man. Some uh, some familiar faces from Discord. Panendra Omnia. Yeah. Mayank is here, Spartan in the house, Mayank, good to see you. Happy Saturday. Um, yeah, man, Saturday morning, you know, thanks for being here. You guys could have been, I don't know, watching Netflix, uh, whatever, but you're here. So let's go, let's go. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Good to see you guys. Good morning, Saturday morning. Um, let's see, Panindra Omnia, hi Anjali, Anjali Shibu, I've seen you somewhere, I think I have seen you on Instagram, I'm not sure, Abhay Joshi, I remember all you guys from the registrations, anonymous, ooh, uh, Joyson is there, Mayank is there, Vedant Khandelwal, uh, Subhajit Adhikari, how are you doing, uh, so yeah, good to see you guys, um, today is going to be a very, very interesting day is going to be like intense it is going to be four five six hours of uh awesomeness and i have kind of like decided to do this as if uh it's an actual class from the game to make a course like i i want to give you guys a ton of value and the idea is that today you go away from this time, you, you go away from game it to make a nitro with a much deeper understanding of games, how to make games, how to get into the game industry. Um, and that's it. So before I do anything, guys, please make sure that you join the Discord server because if the tech gods are with us, everything will be fine. But if they are upset with us, they can all be problems. I have like three internet connections. I have one here, I have one there. I have one like broadband and then I have one BSNL and I also have one Geo, uh, all backups ready. But if shit goes down, uh, Discord is always there. And also on Discord, I have um, I've set it up. I've got channels. You can actually, we can actually have a discussion there uh, for questions. Okay, so if you do have any questions, you can post them over there. Firstly, be part of the Discord server. It's awesome. Um, tons of great stuff going on there. And if things, uh, you know, if, if things go wrong, you guys, you guys can pass messages. To hopefully, uh, stuff comes stuff comes back online. So make sure you're on the Discord server. The link is in the description of this particular video okay so uh go ahead and join and uh right hello safan hello vishal g vishal sri good to see you guys good to see you guys all right so now let me give you a little bit of uh uh heads up as to what's going on firstly uh, let me know where you guys are from okay guys in the chat please let me know which cities you are from which parts of india you guys are from and uh if if from if you're not from india that's fine like let me know where you guys are from and let me know in the chat because um i really want to know 
next i am going to be talking about what's going to be happening today now you guys are of different ages you guys have different backgrounds some of you could be professionals some of you could be students some of you could be doing other jobs um uh, I know people in my course who are in like class 11 and 12. Some people are professional. Some people actually own their own companies. Um, so for all of you guys, and also doesn't matter if you are an artist or a designer or a programmer or whatever your role is, whatever your desired career path is, today has been designed in such a way that everybody will have takeaways. Okay, all of it. has been designed such a way so it's there's nothing here which is very very specific for any particular role um so the morning is going to be more about me talking about the process of making games okay and after that uh we're going to be shifting into careers etc okay so um keep that in mind so uh okay let's see Yes, uh, that's a good question, uh, Panindra. I I know your name, but I keep forgetting uh, your actual name. So yes, we have a break. We will have a break from, I think one no one thirty to two, right? So one thirty to two, we're gonna have a lunch break, so you guys can go and have your lunch or whatever. Um, so yeah. Yay, Spartans in the house. So we have two Spartans. How many Spartans do we have here? Spartans are basically people who are in the game to make a course. Um one of them is Maya who is going to be uh, an admin for Discord. So no naughty stuff. Uh okay, and of course there's Ayush. Uh Ayush is I wanted to have so Ay- Ayush is um he's actually I think in class class 11 and like he's a really smart kid who is in my course uh and like he's made a bunch of games and he's still in class 11 and I'm like dude slow down and uh I wanted to shoot a video with him but he's below 18 so that would might get me into trouble so I just have actually taken some feedback from him which you'll be seeing uh later on so there he is right there uh Ayush uh okay so hi Tejas hi Gameter hi T zero X one N. I know that's supposed to mean something. Um, okay, from Pune. Ah, uh, oh, you're from Nello. Panindra is from Nello. Ah, uh, Andhra Pradesh. Ah, uh, Shubhajit is from Mumbai. Ah, uh, Blender Boy is from Pune. Vedant is from Indore. Rohan from Coimbatore. Vishal is from Tamil Nadu and Gameter is from Haryana. Guys from Chennai. I heard there's uh okay, nobody from Chennai because there's stuff going on in Chennai. There's floods and what not. So, good to see you guys. Welcome, welcome. So, um getting back into it. Once again, guys, if you are here, make sure you're on Discord. Join the Discord server right now because that's our backup and also tonight uh at 9 p.m. we're going to hang out uh you know we'll have a kind of a chit chat question answer you guys can like you know personally ask me questions it'll be a more like this is kind of like me talking over there it'll be like we'll be able to talk to each other so that's going to be happening uh around 9 o'clock tonight so make sure that you're there on discord okay so right so let's go now i'm going to give a quick introduction about myself who i am where i'm from what i do and why you should be listening to me for 6 hours on saturday morning right okay so my name is rahul sahgal um i am uh so my name is rahul sahgal and i have been making games for around 13 years so my story is a little bit a uh, little bit different i used to be in the merchant navy so i was this merchant navy officer navigating officer i joined when i was 17 18 um and i traveled the world it was awesome you know i got to, you know i used to earn dollars when my friends were in college i was earning like hundreds of dollars i was like you know those uh you know throwing money partying having a great time 
Uh, but then once I kind of once I kind of got a bit senior uh, in my early 30s, the money was great. Like I was earning tax free dollars, and that was great. But I was super dissatisfied with what I did. You would imagine that like if you have the car, you have the house, you have the job, you have the money, like married, traveling the world, you'd be happy. But it turns out that if you don't do what you love, or if you're not excited, I mean, like doing what you love is kind of like uh, more rosy, but you have to be excited about what you're doing. You Like when you're sitting down to work on your laptop, you should be excited. You should like, you should say, let's go, right? And I didn't have that. I had money, I had everything. I didn't have that. I didn't have that excitement for my work, that joy for my, for my work. Sometimes, like, now I'm tired, I'm exhausted, like, I'm so tired, but I'm still excited about my work because I love it. And I did not have that when I was in much Navy. So if there's anyone here who is doing something and is like, man, I want to make games because games excite me and I love it. The thing I would say, go for it, okay? It might be hard, it might be difficult, but you can do it. I did it, and which is why I'm here. Like it's it was really it was it was awesome, but it was a really hard transition to go from much Navy. So basically, at the age of 33, I left the much Navy cold like cold turkey, and I just buzzed off to Vancouver Film School because I wanted to make video games. And I was there. I studied game design at Vancouver Film School for one year, and after that. I, I had, you know, I got a job. I started working in the game industry in Vancouver at a company called Piranha Games. Um, and that was awesome as well. To work abroad is something else, guys. Like, to work in the game industry. Okay, to work in the game industry anywhere is good. But abroad in the U.S. and Canada, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, uh, that studio I worked for, the people, uh, you know, the barbecues on Friday night. It was awesome, right? Like, the Work ethic is awesome, it's professional, it's beautiful, and learned so much working there. But then I relocated back to India because of family and personal reasons, and I joined Gameloft uh, as their lead designer. I was there uh, for a year, I think, and then I kind of, uh, I didn't like Gameloft very much because Gameloft's kind of business model is, well, you know what the business model is, and there was not much creative work happening. So I decided to do my own thing, and that is when I actually started teaching at a game college in Hyderabad. That was in 2010, October, that I went into a college, and I got in front of a class, and I said, hey, guys, I'm here to teach you game design and production. So that was, I don't know, 11 years ago. And since then, I've been teaching part-time, and I've also been working, so... I worked for Gameloft, um, and now, after about 13 years, so what I do now is I work for a company called Intain, which is essentially the world's largest uh, casino game company, okay? And they're worth about, I think, $25 billion, and I run a studio, I run the creative team of a studio, um, and we make, we make casino games, and the games I make, are, they kind of have this really, it have a worldwide online audience, not in India, of course, um, but abroad. And the games I make, on an average, make, I don't know, millions of dollars every month. In fact, the world's best and world's top blackjack game, online blackjack game, is actually mine. So, uh, and the interesting thing uh, is that, uh, interesting story, so first time, I was in Hyderabad and I got, I got a call from a casino game company. And at first, I, I think I, I like I play Overwatch, I, I play PC games. You know, uh, I, 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 I'm like I'm, I'm a gamer gamer. I never played a casino game in my life. And I got a call from someone saying, "Hey, we need help uh, with our games." And I was like, "Oh, wow, really? Casino games? I don't know. How much do you pay?" And then they told me, and I was like, "Okay, I can be there in 15 minutes." <laughs> you know, so. In the beginning, I did it to kind of support my family. I was not too excited about it. But the weird thing is that over the years, it's really grown on me, right? Now, like, I'm I'm a poker guy. I love playing poker. It's about the only game that I actually have time for these days. And I love it. So I love casino games. And it's actually grown on me. Now, we'll be talking about that, okay? We'll be talking about this, uh, about this particular aspect. So... The truth is like, you know, a lot of people say, oh, casino game. Oh, I make casino games. I love it. And I make a good living making those games. And I enjoy it. And 
the cool thing is I get to do stuff on the side. I love teaching, right? I've been teaching for about 12, 13 years now. And I'm always working on projects with my students. There's always something going on. So that means I get to make a good living and I get to do what I love on the site. I get to teach, I get to make games. And I also actually do consultancy for mobile game companies. Some mobile game companies got me, hey Rahul, like smaller companies, they can't really afford someone senior on the design side. So they come to me and say, hey Rahul, can you help us out with game design, user experience, art, etc." So uh, once in a while, I'll do a part-time gig to help people. I'll help my friends out uh, in the mobile game industry. So that's what I do. Also, I have a family, I have a wife, and I have one, two, three, four, five kids, out of which one is a canine. Uh, she's nine years old now. She'll be somewhere here. Um, yeah. So I have five kids and I have a day job and I teach. So you guys uh, might be like, <laughs> dude, how are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And I'm basically like, because I love teaching. Okay, because I love teaching. And I was kind of teaching for about 10 years. And at different colleges, I started off with Backstage Pass, and then I was called by VIT Bhopal, so I started teaching there, and then I was called by Srishti Bangalore, so I started teaching at Srishti Bangalore as well. And what happened was that, see the thing is, I've seen a great game course. I've seen a great game course, okay? And I have not seen that in India. I tried to do that, like I tried to teach the way games are taught internationally in India and there was so much resistance because of the university system it was all like you go to a class um, you will I will teach them and then they will write an exam and answer questions and then they get their degree right and there was absolutely no uh, there was absolutely no focus on project it was all theory right now the first mantra of the gamer to make a method is that the only way to learn how to make video games is to actually make them and nobody understood that right game colleges etc in india like i was in the system for 10 years and the system is not good i would use stronger words for it but the system is not good um so which is why it was very really frustrating to not to be able to teach people um, and follow the structure that I know works, which is why I started Game to Maker, which is something which is very, very practical, right? It has all the teaching and all the mentoring around actually making a game, right? So which is why I set up Game to Maker and um, I am the founder of Game to Maker and I am helped in Game to Maker by my wife, who you know who's uh who helps me with pretty much everything from strategy to classes social media and everything so it's two of us uh running the show here okay so let me have a quick sip of water all right uh tamil Nadu, haryana dark reader joined now anything i missed just an introduction just an introduction himan shoes from pune bongo from hyderabad i know you dude bangalore Um, yep, Ayush, attending from floods, wow, okay. Oh, somebody had classes with me backstage fast, Blender Boy, theory never works. Yeah, someone uh, enrolled in a bad course with instead of game design, me talked me very bad game art. Dude, that is the story in India, it is really sad, it's really sad. Um, and to be honest, the thing with most game colleges is that um, they, like they just want your money, right? They just want your money, pretty much. And once they have your money, they give you a degree. So yeah, we, we we give you a degree, right? Doesn't matter if you really don't really know how to make games, but here's your degree. And the thing is, degrees don't really work in the game industry. Okay, all right. So, um, right now, let's kind of get more into it. Now, let's get into the part where. I mentioned I'm going to teach you how to make world-class games. Okay, so a uh, quick show of hands now. 
Tell me if you guys have actually made a game or being part of a game project. Okay, um, like you, there's that buzz which you have when you're making your own game. You like have this idea in your head, and then you do some stuff. You open a game engine, uh, you make a character. You know, you, you create a, a character controller, moving around, doing something. You do a little bit of work, and an idea which used to be in your head is actually playable, and that is a crazy buzz. That is a crazy buzz. That is the buzz that keeps us coming back, keeps us game makers coming back. Like that first time something from your mind gets implemented and other you and other people can play it. So who's felt that buzz? Tell me, it doesn't matter if you finished it. It doesn't matter if it was successful, if it made money, how many people played it. Who here has actually made a game and actually felt that buzz of making game? Um, let me know. Let me know. Um, awesome. So the truth, okay, is that we in India are a country of engineers. Okay. I used to teach at, at, at the IT Bhopal and I did a poll once of 50, 50 percent. Uh, I did a poll of who wants to do what it was a BTEC course and 60 percent of people in my class did not want to be programmers, okay? They wanted to be designers, they wanted to be, uh, you know, story writers, they wanted to be 3D artists. But the problem is that everyone gets sent by their parents into this B-Tech funnel. It's like, listen, just go and do your B-Tech beta and then you do what you want. Just finish your B-Tech. It's like a meal ticket. Like they think it's like a meal ticket. You get your B-Tech and you're done. They don't have to worry about you. And that's actually not true. Um, <clears throat> the interesting thing is that in India right now, we have, because of this attitude, we actually have quite a shortage of people on the design and art sites. Like if I told you some of the salaries that artists and, and designers are getting somewhere, you would be very, very surprised. Okay, artists and designers are really rocking it because there's very, very few of them. And surprisingly enough, 2D artists, okay, um, are actually really in great demand. So if you're a 2D artist or if you're a 2D art, there's like, there's a lot of potential. Uh, there's a lot of potential for you. Um, all right. So uh, 10X1N is saying, I've had that urge to make my imagination into a game, try to make art, didn't really turn out well, just started to learn how to make games. That's fine, man. Like when you start your first game, your first experiment is most of the time, it doesn't work, right? And why it doesn't work, which is why I'm here to kind of tell you about why it probably didn't work and how you can actually make it work, okay? Um, we're going to be talking about that. Right. So now a little bit of background about the game industry for those people who are like, oh, is there a career in games? Can you actually make a living making games? Yes, you can. You can make a living. You can have a family. You can have a car. You can go on a vacation. You can do all that. The game industry is um, a very, very real and very, very happening industry, particularly in India, because we are expanding like crazy. Okay, I know people who have kind of, like I, I have someone, a former student of mine, I was talking to him like a short while ago, and he was telling me about his, his salary jumps. Okay, and I was like, what? Insane, he started off at, I think, earning 29,000 rupees a month, I think five years ago, and now he's earning close to 2.5 lakh rupees a month. But okay, he's really good. He's this brilliant kid. I know from uh, from school, I used, to, I used to teach him. I used to even work with him. But my point is that if you're good, if you're motivated, if you're smart, if you have some strategy, you can go far. You can move really fast. Like software, etc., is kind of like this slow moving upward graph. No matter what you do, but games, you can be like. You can take these insane jumps if you're smart, if you know what you're doing. So the game industry in India is really, really booming. Abroad, I mean, like overall, $160 billion revenue in 2020, people. Games is bigger than music. Games is bigger than TV. Games is bigger than movies. Okay. It's the biggest entertainment industry in the world. So if you're parents or if you're, you know, 
like uh, Sharma uncle says anything, just like give him my number. Seriously, I'll talk to him or show him one of my videos on YouTube, um, and that should be fine. So don't worry about where the game industry is going. Game industry is expanding. It's getting bigger. It's going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so it is a great career to have. Okay, and the very cool thing is India is like people are throwing money at games right now. Okay. Um, like VCs are coming in, they're unicorns uh, in the game industry now, MPL, etc., billion dollar companies. And the game industry in India is really expanding very rapidly. And it's not just mobile games. Right? It, it used to be that India was just like purely mobile games, but now that's changing. It's changing slowly. But newer, better studios are coming up. Opportunities are increasing. Uh, so, you know, that thing of India just being a mobile uh, centric company is not really there. So guys, you might you might hear some screaming of babies or some barking of dogs once in a while. So just bear with me. There's, it's Saturday, all the kids are home, someone's watching TV, somebody's yelling, the dog, if there's an Amazon delivery, like the dog barks. So, um, so bear with me. Okay, so coming back to it, the game industry is big. The game industry is getting bigger. Don't worry about your career. Don't worry about your future. Don't worry about jobs. Like, I'm not kidding. If you love doing this stuff, once you get into it, the world opens up to you, okay? So I promise you, you are in the right place. However, however, you got to have your expectations, right? It's not all roses, okay? You have, your, you have to have your expectations, right? Uh, and which is why I'm here, okay? I will be, like, I'm very honest, I'm very frank. Uh, uh, I don't know who, who said it. I think Joyson, who's here, says, I fear your truths, okay? So I'm like, I'm very blunt because people need to hear the truth. Uh, it doesn't go, say, you know, everything is fine. You can make the games you want. You can get the job you want. You've been making triple games in three months, uh, triple A games in three months. Everything's going to be awesome. It's not like that, okay? There are a lot of things you need to understand and I will be talking the truth. I'll be very frank. It's possible that I may be destroying a lot of your illusions, okay? So... <clears throat> All right. Let me just have a look at what you guys are talking about. Um, <laughs> Bongo saying, uh, Oh, yeah, Jinesh, you sent me your game. Nice, really cool trailer. Uh, Completion of games quite time taking, but the making of a game complete more satisfying. Yep, first game was bad, horribly, uh, horribly coded. Took too much time, but I learned a lot. Exactly, completed VFX. Uh, I get mostly stuck in programming. Sharma, uncle, I know, right? <laughs> Parents don't allow us. Yeah, that's a hard one, man. But like I'm saying, see, that's a big point. Parents not allowing us is a big thing. And I totally get that, which is why I actually make content. Dude, I've had calls. You know how many students of mine I've actually had calls with in which I've actually spoken to the parents many, many times. I'm actually talking to parents. Um, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, okay. All right, people, let's move on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is so today's agenda is now we're going to actually start getting into it, right? We're going to get the process of making games and then we actually, hopefully, will be able to have a demonstration uh, sometime just before lunch. There's actually a game that the people, uh, that the Spartans of the game to make a course are making and once I explain the process, I'm actually going to show you a game that is being made during that process, but that's going to be a little bit later. Now, give me a second while I set up my slides. All right, so are you guys ready?
हेलो या सॉरी फॉर दैट हेलो या इफ यू गाइस कैन हियर मी सॉरी फॉर दैट या या आई नो आई नो No, yeah, I yeah, I I know. I just my slides kind of give me a second guys, give me a second to sort this out. Okay, so you know what? Instead of showing you the slides I'm just going to talk okay you guys are going to have to see my face rather than see the slides and that's absolutely fine okay so the one thing that you guys should remember is that game making is an iterative process now what exactly does an iterative process mean it means that whatever your idea is about what you're going to make for the game is going to change you have an idea in your head for what you want to do but that is 99% going to change so the process you follow for making games is that you have a concept right you come up with an idea or concept which is in your head and then you say okay i'm going to make this game and what you do is you do make it you make something small you make something big it doesn't matter but once you made something what happens is that it you need to test it because we are dealing with psychology here we are dealing with player emotions and you might think i'm going to actually um i'm going to make this particular grappling hook mechanic uh with this crazy physics and it's going to be awesome it's going to be so much fun but when you implement because it's all in your head once you actually implement it once you actually create it and play it it might be very very different from what you planned so it means that first you conceptualize something um then you create it then you actually test it you have to test it once you've tested it you actually find out how it feels to play it and then you modify it so this is a process this is like circular process just as you go around and around and around you you think of something you implement it in the game you test it you see how it feels if it doesn't work you change it and then you release it so this is an iterative process which to be honest most software most products actually follow this process but in games it is much much more unpredictable so whenever you're making a game remember that your ideas are going to change your implementation of your ideas is going to change a lot okay that's like that's just that's just a given all right All right so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this as a PDF in Discord how's that right um I'll see if I can figure out uh why my audio is not coming during the slides but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh I'm going to actually put the you know what I can actually put this in in the in the Nitro chat right so i'll put these slides in nitro chat okay um all right okay so the game production process is one which actually has four phases right um the first one is pre production right now this is the boring part okay pre production is really boring so the pre production is the part where you think you don't actually do anything okay usually what happens most people is that when we come up with a game idea we want to do it we want to make stuff we want to start implementing straight away and the truth is that professional game makers don't actually do that i for example if i'm working on a game um uh, that is going to take me 6 months it's possible that i might spend 2 months actually pre producing the game now what exactly is pre production 
Pre-production is basically when you are planning out what you are going to do. And it has several processes in pre-production. First of all is conceptualization, right? Conceptualization means what exactly are we going to make? What's the game going to be, right? Now you have an idea in your head for what you want to do, but it's your idea. Most probably you are the player. So in the conceptualization process, you ask a whole bunch of questions. You ask firstly, the most imp important question, which is why? Why am I or why are we making the game? And the why is really, really important because everyone's why differs. Now, if you're making a game for the first time, right? To have a why that, you know, I want to make money, I want to be rich, I want to have a million downloads, that's not going to work out, okay? That why is not a good why for your first game. Now, if you're going to have that reason, that why for your first game, it's not going to happen, okay? Which is where with most people, the problem happens is at the why, because straight off, their why is wanting to be rich and famous and make a big, huge game. And that doesn't happen. So in the beginning, your why has to be a simpler why. Your why has to be because I want to learn how to make games, because I want to find a team, or I want to get a job for which I want a, I want a portfolio. So how you show this slide Okay, that's a good idea. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna show you the slide. Hello. Okay. So if you guys can hear me. You need to show and talk. Yeah. So uh, I think I may have managed to fix it. So if you guys can hear me and if you can see the slide, let me know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we are back, people. So. So what you're seeing right here is the chart. This is the game production process. This is how video games are made, right? So first you have pre-pro, which is the pre-production process. Now, pre-production can be a painful process, okay? Pre-production is kind of a painful process for a lot of people because this is where you're not really doing anything. You're just like, you're talking to people and you're making documents and you're doing all these things. And a lot of people get very, very frustrated because they're like, dude, this stuff is boring. I don't want to do this. I just want to actually make the game. But the truth is that the first P, the first P, so this pre-pro right now is the first P of making games, right? It's the plan. This is really, really important. 99% of people who start making games for the first time, they don't follow this process, okay? They don't follow this process and then they have serious problems, okay? And why do they have serious problems? It's because they are going to do things which are too big and which people don't want to play. So over here in pre-pro, you have conceptualization, you have prototyping. Now the conceptualization process I'll be talking about a little bit, then you have prototyping. So what exactly is prototyping? Prototyping also I'll tell you about. There's documentation, there's concept art, there's project planning, and there's scoping, right? So pre-production, right? So this is where we ask some questions. And those questions are firstly, why are we making a game? Once you've answered that, once you say, okay, I want to make a game because I want to learn the process of making games or I want to make a game for my portfolio, have a realistic why, which is why in the Game of Omega course, this why takes a long time. I sit down with my game teams, 
whenever the game teams are formed and I ask them the why. Why are you guys making this game? And I check their why. If their why is okay, I tell them to actually go ahead. Okay. Um, next, what game are we making? Right. The what is also a really, really big question because there is the question of scope. Once in your, for your first game, for your first game, don't try and make GTA like it's not going to happen. Try and make something small. Now, this is where it's okay. It's really hard. Okay. It's really hard to understand what is it exactly that I can make. How much time is it going to take to make this game? This is where most people fail, which is where a mentor comes. This is why teaching comes in. This is where I'm here. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, right? Lastly is the how. How are we going to make this game? What is the process going to be? How much time is it going to be? How much time is it going to take? Who is going to do what? Right? What is that? process going to be of making the game the, this is a project planning now this stuff is like for a lot of people like us this is boring but if you mess this up your project is probably toast which is why i see all of you guys over here is i've made this game i've done this i'm that i guarantee you that 99 percent of you did not follow this process okay um and which is why your games uh, fail, right? So, th so these are the four P's and we're still talking about the first P of the game to make a method. All right. Next up, conceptualization. Now coming up with a concept for a game, trust me, I've been on, like, I think I must have been, I made, I must have been part like 60, 70 game projects right now. And the conceptualization always follows one of these templates, right? This is actually the process of coming up with a game idea. Where basically, where do game ideas come from? Firstly, you have the option of making a clone, which a lot of people actually do. I'm not saying make a clone, but that is one of one of the the places that game ideas come from. Okay, making a clone. A lot of people do that. And not people actually make money from that. I'm not saying you should do it, but that's one of the options. The second one is sequel. Now, sequels are pretty interesting because it means you already have an audience base and you just have to kind of like just call it two, add some new mechanics, add some new characters, make a few extra levels, and catching, catching, catching. You're making money. Okay? That always works. Next up, you have sequel. Uh, next up, you have re-release. So re-release is basically remastering of a game. So what happens a lot of times, we have a game that has... Okay. My wife is saying that I should put my face back. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put my face back. Okay. So the next thing is uh, uh, an IP. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking about release. So release is when you sometime in casino we have a game just doing, just like rocking it and be like, you know what? Let's just re-release it. Let's do the art. Let's brush it up a little bit, and uh, and that works as well, right? And then of course you have something called IP based, which is you know what IP is intellectual property. So if you want to rock something, what you can actually do is get an IP, which is why Chota Beam. Is make so much money. Chota Beam game, games make money because even though they're really terrible, everyone knows Chota Beam, right? So uh, kids look at the IP, they see the character they like, and then they actually they play that game. Now this is like this is the this is the real business stuff that I'm talking about, which a lot of you might be like, "Ew, no, I don't want to make a Chota Beam game," and you're right, neither do I. Um, but this is how it is. Now, lastly, you have something called new IP, right? Now, new IP is obviously, uh, new IP is obviously what everybody wants to do. We want to make new games. We want to make beautiful new things that nobody has ever done before. And the truth is that that stuff is super risky. That stuff is super, super, super risky because it's untested. It's untested and games which haven't really uh, game concept which haven't really been tested. First thing they can do is they can be super hits. They can go places, make you know tens of millions of dollars, but most probably they won't. Most probably, most probably they'll fail. Um, 
uh, mate pati saying start small is ideal we are game loft testers my spend my friend spend more than 60 lakhs but should not the product the like quality football yeah man dude i used to be at game loft uh, i think the fo- i was on the fourth floor fifth floor all testers uh, i sympathize with you yeah yep yep um, i've been there it's uh, it's hard work man testing is hard work so anyway so uh, if you're making a game if you're doing something new your chances of success are really big how do you reduce those chances of success right how do you reduce your chances of success and i will tell you how you do it you do it by prototyping okay you do it by prototyping your game and when you prototype your game you um you reduce the risk massively because what's happening in prototyping is that you it's possible you have this cool new mechanic that you want to make and in your head it seems really cool it seems really it like it's going to be fun it's going to be fantastic you know everyone's going to enjoy it you're going to be rich and famous but there are some problems firstly you don't know if it's going to be fun maybe in your mind it's fun but it's not actually fun maybe it's going to be really boring and it's, it's not going to be as interesting as you think and what's going to happen and that's the first problem the second problem is that maybe you can't do it maybe you have this idea this this great idea but it's technically not possible for you to actually do that okay um so prototyping is a superpower because it is a great way to de-risk your cool new game idea so what exactly do you prototype do you prototype in like you build the whole game no you don't build the whole game what you do is that you have you have you do something kind of like uh simple so what you're doing here is that you're making something small you're making something with programmer art but you are testing the new thing that you want to do now if you if you have a character control if you have shooting in your game you don't need to prototype for shooting because you know there are a billion games which have shooting so you don't need to prototype shooting but if you have this crazy new invisibility physics you know flipping in the air plus grappling whole hook mechanic which thing is really cool then you should prototype that first okay it doesn't have to look great it but it has to be the code has to be written you have to actually implement it and see okay this is actually kind of fun firstly i can do it and then it's actually kind of fun so prototyping is absolutely absolutely important because what's going to happen is that otherwise if you don't prototype if it's not fun or if you can't do it you're going to spend you're going to build a game around something that doesn't work okay that new thing doesn't work so please make sure that if there's something new and cool in your game make sure that you actually prototype it before you get into main production right so still in the first we are still planning so there's prototyping now if you remember um there was a let me go back to the uh let me go back to the slide with the process right so once again uh this is the process right this is the process that i'm um i'm talking about uh the game production process so here you have conceptualization prototyping documentation concept art project planning and scoping right so now coming back to game documentation okay game documentation is absolutely vital okay this is insanely vital and, and there are no a lot of people who don't actually do this like eh game documentation who needs game documentation and that is absolutely not true and i'll tell you why it's possible that the first time if you're starting off on your own you just one person okay um it's possible that it's possible that you like one person and you're making your own game and you're like dude why do i need to create documentation why do i need to write game design document for my game it's my game it's all in my head and the truth is that you are not going to remember after 3 months 
okay even if it's just you so write that stuff down make a design document make a big concept document make a game design document even if it's just one of you because it's not always going to be one of you okay you will be working in a team even if you hit it off even if you hit it off as a solo developer at some point you're going to be working with a team you're going to be hiring people on the outside you're going to be hiring people to make art whatever right and most probably you're going to be working for a company which has dozens of people people in india people in the us people in canada people in philippines and someone's testing somewhere someone's doing art somewhere and documentation is what holds everything together so this is what i tell people get your documentation right for a lot of people for a lot of people documentation is kind of painful okay for me no i'm a designer i love it like i love writing documentation okay call me weird whatever but um but making documentation is super 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 important okay so um in game of make we we're like super serious about the stuff and we have this process by which we actually come up with three concept documents so let me talk about concept documents now okay so what we actually do is that we have concept documents so concept documents is basically just like a couple of pages of a rough idea about your game so what our game teams do is we come up with two or three or four different concept documents which are kind of very very different so instead of just getting invested in one idea what you do is that you actually come up with two or three or four different ideas and then you have all this creative bandwidth with all these games and then what happens is you make one two three four different game documents and then you choose from those three four five different game documents you choose one you vote you discuss it and you actually come up with one particular game idea so concept documents are really awesome for that and um perhaps later on i'll show you some of uh the process that we follow in the game of the maker method right next is the game design document which is super detailed if you're a game designer what is actually the game design document a game design document is basically if you got kidnapped if you're a game designer and you have a game idea and you got kidnapped um the game team should be able to make the game exactly the way it was in your head you want to go deeper in gdd um well sure like gdd just the game design document i could be talking on it all day in the game to make a method i have i think like 2 hours of classes no not 2 hours i like 3 hours 3 and a half 4 hours of classes just about gdd so the gdd is a very very deep topic and it's a really good sign like yash if you want to go deeper in gdd it means you really have uh, a designer's mindset um and so yeah so do have a look at the game to make i'll be talking about the game to make a course later on right next up uh next up the game art document so game art document usually the game art document is just uh it's just something which is added into the game design document but if you have if you have a really again that is like kind of really crazy when it comes to art something really really different and really really out there or if you have a game that's based the selling point of the game is art then you probably need to make a different art design document because so so if your game is like super art heavy then you probably need to make a separate art design document right next up technical design document so technical design document is basically uh a a, a document which is all the, about the architecture of your game it is written by the lead programmer of your game which basically tells if there's team programmer takes up tells them how the architecture of the game is set up I and mean, this is more important for larger games which have like multiplayer games etc and complicated architecture so a technical design document is really important next you have something called a feature spec document what exactly is a feature spec document so what's going to happen is that uh, trust me especially if you work in india 90% of the time if you're a game designer you're not going to be making a game design document you're going to be making a feature spec document so feature spec document is like a game design document but only for a feature okay i've written feature documents which are like 20 pages long because a feature can be really really complicated and new so basically it's like, think of a game design document but 
only for one particular feature, especially for live ops. Because right now what happens is that most probably you're going to be running a mobile game company. So, um, and then what's going to happen is that, <laughs> is that um, the game is already done. The game is running for years and your job is going to be implementing, for example, a new uh, a battle pass system or a new uh, maybe a new user interface or maybe some kind of of combat system right so your design if you're a designer you're not writing a game design document you got to be writing a feature design feature spec document right which could be like 10 20 pages could be really really complicated right so um yeah so next up you have asset list Asset list is super important. Ah, uh, just give me one second, guys. I have a okay. I have a video to download. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah. Dip, depender is answering it. Depender is answering the question. No, no, no. What I said. Should we make the game Yeah, somebody's asking, should we make a GDD game jam? Totally, totally, totally. Let's see, it doesn't, it's a the game jam, you don't have time, right? So you can actually make a kind of like a more of something between a, a concept document and a game design document. It's good practice, but you just like quickly bang out some stuff, put some, instead of writing like a lot of detail, make some sketches and stuff. If you're, even for game jams, doing basic, fast, quick documentation is a really good practice. And that's actually a really good question. Is it okay to watch Is it okay to just watch some tutorial and build a game, like a small game, just to learn how the whole stuff works? Yeah, well, absolutely. Like to start off, you know, for your first game project, starting off, you never built a game. You can even go on YouTube. You can watch a tutorial. You can build a small game. So you get a little bit of confidence in your ability to make a game. That's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, absolutely fine. Okay. Um, all right. Coming back to it now, asset list. Now, asset list is something which is like I can't tell you how important that is. So, what exactly is an as asset list? An asset list is a bunch of stuff that you need to actually make in the game. So, an asset list is going to be for the artist is going to be, um, for example, a, a graphic asset list is going to be uh, how many characters do you have? If, you, if you're making a side-scrolling platformer which has four characters, right? You have a protagonist, you have the enemy, you have a sidekick, and you have another extra enemy. So you have four characters, that means you have to make four characters. And for each character, you have to make four animations. There's going to be a walk animation, there's going to be a run animation, there's going to be a jump animation, there's going to be a death animation, there's going to be a firing animation, that's five, five, six, seven. So for each character, you have to have one particular animation for each character, which means that now you have an asset list. In your asset list, you're going to have, to have characters, and for each character, you're going to have five animations. Then you're going to have backgrounds. So in your asset list, you're going to say, okay, I need to have a background, I need to have props, I need to have building, I need to have a UI, I need to have buttons, I need to have main menu, New backgrounds. I think I said backgrounds already. So you need to have all these things in the game, and that's an asset list. So the asset list is something that the art the artist gets, and the artist is like, okay. So I have to make ten backgrounds, fifteen characters, six animations, eighteen buttons. Okay, this is going to take me this much time. This is going to take me this much time. It's going to take me this much time, right? So which is how you plan how much time is going to take. So, so if you if you notice, guys. We haven't even started producing the game yet. I've been going on and on and on, and we haven't even started making the game. Okay, this is we are just in the first P. Okay, and the first P is the one which everybody neglects, which is why I'm going a little bit extra hard today because you guys probably know about production. You, you know, if you made a game, you've probably gone into the second P and you've pretty much just skipped the first P, which is why most projects fail. And which is why I go really hard when people join the game to make a course. I say, okay, guys, listen. So we're going to be pre-producing now. It's going to take time. Put put your patient hats on. Um, right. Okay. Next up. 
game concept art. Okay, so any concept artist there? Anybody here in the in the in in, in our uh, YouTube live is actually an artist or a concept artist? Um, I'm I'm keen to know because concept art is really important. Concept artists actually make a good living these days. Okay, they make a pretty good living these days. Uh, I gotta tell you that. One sec, I have to add. I have to add a video which I'm going to be showing soon. Give me a second. I just have to browse that file. All right. Cool. Okay. So game concept art. Game concept art is basically uh, what are we going to make? What is the game world going to look like? Really, really important. So even if you're an indie, even if you're making game for the first time, I would definitely, definitely recommend doing concept art either by yourself. Um, most probably if you're a programmer, you'd be like, okay, how am I going to do concept art? Um, which is why I tell people it's okay once in a while, like in the beginning to make a game on your own. However, this is why I really, really recommend group projects, okay? A group project means that you have an artist who can actually make some art, you have a programmer, you have a designer, you have several different people. So game concept art is really, really, uh, really, really helpful because it helps you to actually figure out how your game is going to look like in advance. And I'll tell you another very, very cool thing about concept art, guys. So imagine, uh, imagine you have three artists in your team, okay? One artist is doing characters, one artist is doing uh, environment, and one artist is doing UI. What normally happens is that, because all artists have different art styles, right? So what happens is that these three artists with different art styles put all their art into your game, it looks like a complete mess. It looks like a schizophrenic mess because everybody's art is in there and it looks like everything looks different. Everything looks different, right? It, it looks horrible. Concept art is awesome because concept art actually helps you guys to sync everything together and make it look good. Okay, that's one of the reasons why concept art is really great. Um, right, another tip I'll give you is that uh, a cool thing you can do is actually make three uh, three different variations of the same thing in concept art and then have the team to choose. Okay, that's a, that's a tip right there. Next, okay. So now from there, from uh, pre-production, we're actually going to get into kind of like which is the most uh, boring part for a lot of people and which is game project planning. Okay, now game project planning, once again, is something most people don't like. But if you're going to be, like, if you're going to make it, if you're going to be successful, if you're going to be working for a company, if you're going to be working for yourself, you have to understand game project planning. Like, you don't have to be a super um, hardcore uh, scrum master or whatever, but you have to have some idea of how long it's going to take. Firstly, Who's going to do what? If you have two, three, four people in your team, you have to figure out who's going to do what, which is very, very important. Otherwise, once again, it's going to be a mess. So you have to have, okay, listen, you're the lead designer, you're the lead programmer, you're the artist, you're going to help out with this, you're going to help out with this. You have to figure out who's going to do what, okay? And then you have to have an approximately, approximate idea of how long it's going to take. This is painful, uh, I'll admit. This is like for creative people say, oh God, why do I have to sit down with Excel sheets and numbers and times and budget? But it's really important, okay? So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because um, we don't have that much time. Right, now this is one of my favorite parts and this is where, this is where all of you have problems. Not just all of you, me. Even now, after 13 years, I still have problems with this, okay? and which is game scoping. What exactly is scoping? Game scoping, I don't know how many of you understand the Hindi phrase, Hamari Aukar hai, kya hai? game banane ki. Can we actually make this game? Like, 
I'm, it's possible that you are starting off in your game career and you want to make a game and you can't because it's like it's much too big. It's not within your capabilities. Okay, so a little bit about scoping. Now, uh, remember that there is something there is something called project weight. So project weight. What exactly is project weight? Project weight is how complicated is this game, right? How complicated is this game? Now, there can be you. You can have a game which is design heavy. You can have a game which is programming heavy. You can have a game which is art heavy. Now, depending on who you are, okay, depending on who you are. If you are a, if you are a, if you have a team or if you are a good programmer, you can actually be a little bit more adventurous. You can do a little bit more with your programming, right? Um, but if you are, if you have more experienced designers, then you can actually do more complicated stuff to design. So design, design heavy stuff, for example, is open world, non-linear gameplay, difficulty levels, and crafting. Okay, art heavy means that you have a lot of characters, you have a large game world, you have customizable characters, and you have different art styles. So if you don't have an artist in your team, don't try this stuff. If you have, if you don't have someone who's experienced in design, don't try this stuff. Don't have an open world game, a non-linear gameplay. Choose something simple, right? This is what scoping is. Make sure in your pre-production that you can actually do what you plan. Next is code heavy. Now, if you have some crazy physics in your game, or you have multiplayer, or you have an open world game, or you have different game modes, well, it means you need to have a very. Uh, it means to have. You need to have a pretty experienced programmer. So unless you have an experienced programmer, unless you have an experience, I mean, don't do that stuff. So this is scoping. Try and make sure before you start making the game that you actually have the capability to make that game. How do you decide that? Once again, that's kind of tricky because scoping is something which actually comes with experience. It comes after a few years of making games, right? Which is where somebody like me comes in. So which is why in Gamer to Maker, I look at people's games and I'm like, guys, you can't do this because this is out of scope. It's going to take too long. It's going to be very difficult to make. You don't have the teammates for this. You don't have the skills to do this yet, right? Because trust me, you're going to push yourself, but don't push yourself to a point where your game breaks, like where you can't make your own game. Like do not push yourself to that point, which is why um, which is why scope is really important. Okay. Uh, next thing for scope, there are a few things which you really have to keep in mind. Firstly, are you capable of it? Right? You have to be really frank about this. Um, are you? Do you have the capability? Do you have the experience to actually make this feature or make this multiplayer feature or make these physics? Can you actually do that stuff? It's possible you're not. So you've got to be frank with yourself, man. You've got to be really frank with yourself and be like, okay, I can't do this. Next experience level, you have to see in your team if it's if it's the first time you're making a game. Don't make complicated stuff. Maybe you have a teammate who's made like six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten games, and then you can be like, oh, okay, um, that's cool. We can try this because we have this teammate. He's actually done a multiplayer game before, or somebody who's actually done a decent bit of physics. That's fine. Next up, motivation. Okay, motivation is motivation is really important. It might sound a bit vague, but remember that in your team you're going to have people with different motivation levels and they're going to be sometimes really hard to work with. There will be some people who are like super motivated, who will do everything on time, who will put the game as the first priority and there will be other people who are not going to be as motivated as you. So make sure that you, you adjust your project keeping in mind the motiva motivation level of different people in the game. Some people, if they have problems, be like, dude, I'm going to stay up all night and I'm going to fix this. I'm going to find, uh, I'm going to find, uh, the, the, I'm going to solve this problem. And some people are like, you know what? <laughs> we can't do this. Let's do something else. Okay. Um, how to earn, Chiknesh is asking, how to earn maximum revenue doing ads or ad mob should be include uh, in, in, in the game. So I'm not going to be talking about marketing as such um, today, mobile game marketing, but 
we do have uh, we do have uh, a fair bit of this in the game to make a course if you're interested. Okay. Uh, next up. Time availability. Okay, this is a big one. So when you're scoping your game, when you're coming up with a game idea, you have to think of how much time you have. Okay, you have to think, okay, so next two months later, my cousin is getting married, which means that I'm probably going to be busy for 15 days, which means I'm not going to work. So when you're coming up, uh, you know, when you're starting a game, you ask your teammates, hey guys, uh, do you guys have any personal commitments? Because see, personal stuff happens. People people get sick. Uh, shit happens. Uh, shit happens all the time. Okay. However, it means that uh, the things which are actually going to happen, make sure they're planned. Out. Talk to people in your team. Hey man, uh, can you do this? And they're like, you know what? Actually, I didn't think of it. That three months later, I have a vacation coming up. So which means I'll not be able to work from this time. This time. Okay. So be very very aware of this stuff. Okay. Last thing is personal life uh, complications temperament this is a big thing and you'll see when you start working in teams that a lot of people drop out of projects like stuff happens they are motivated in the beginning and then the drop out of the game project that stuff happens a lot so this is all the stuff that's going to actually um, this is actually going to be um, that's going to be affecting your game okay just give me a sec for a sip of water So now we talk about pre-production. So now I'm gonna kind of quickly go, um, gonna just quickly kind of go through the process uh, of making games, right? And this is what it looks like. This is the life cycle of a video game, right? We talked about, we talked about pre-production, so which all that stuff happens. And trust me, that stuff takes really long. So if, if you're making a game and you haven't done your pre-production properly, um, you probably gonna have problems at some some point. But if you have done your pre-production and it's taken extra long, don't worry. It's quite normal to take a bunch of time time doing pre-pro. I know people in the game to make a course. I actually they've been doing it for months and they're kind of just still at just about starting production, right? So once your pre-production starts, as you guys can see, there is an arrow which says production starts. And what you see, uh, you see those milestones where you have the you know the red pink i'm not sure what color that is can you see where the arrows are those are milestones so the first milestone is where production starts and the first milestone after that is alpha right so what exactly is alpha alpha is when your game is feature complete right what exactly the feature complete means that you're programming your main programming tasks are over you have a menu you have if you have a game which has jumping and double jumps and triple jumps and like grappling hooks whatever all that stuff is written like all the code is written now this game may look terrible alphas look terrible because the art is not implemented you may have some art you may have just somehow to download off the internet so alpha is when the main programming tasks are finished the bulk of the programming is over but your game still looks bad and probably pays bad because it's it's completely untested it's kind of like it's it's buggy as hell it looks terrible but you can play it okay and alpha is when you call feature complete now alpha is a really really important time and it's a really important time because this is where you're going to start having a feel of your game this is where you're going to have a feel of how your game plays of the gameplay of the experience possible if you have a story you know if you have some story in there that stuff is not but when it comes to gameplay this is where you can actually start testing it and this is the part where if you want to make a world-class game people you have to get somebody else to test your game it does not work for you guys to just um so tell me something you guys who has actually made a game which has actually reached this stage right did you ever have a game which had reached alpha anybody or did you guys stop before that 
Let me know. Let me know. Okay. So this is where game speech comes in. Also, this is where you need to start testing your game. But here's the thing. This is very different from beta testing because you show it to a very, very few people. Most people don't know. Most people will look at the alpha and say, oh my God, this game sucks. This is a horrible game, you know, and you, you, you might be offended. Um, so the people who are going to actually test your alpha are people who know video games a little bit. They understand that they're playing an alpha and they're only supposed to evaluate the gameplay and not the art and stuff like that. Okay, so which is why alpha testing is important because this is where your feedback is going to make or break. It's going to set your direction for the rest of the game process. So this is where for the first time you have to get somebody from the outside to test your game. Most companies, alpha testing is done internally. So you get people within the company, within the team who are not part of the development process. They will play the game, they'll give you feedback, say, oh, these controls are not good. You know, this is not good. So yo, there are some, um, <laughs> somebody saying, uh, like one saying, I always stopped at alpha. Well, at least you reach alpha. So alpha is where shit gets real. This is where, you have to show it to people. Otherwise, like you're, you're going to make big mistakes in your game. This way you can catch the big design flaws. Okay. The next one is beta. So now the way, ha the, what happens is that now from the beginning of production to alpha, the programmers are working really hard. Okay. The program. Really hard. So the one interesting thing I'll tell you is that designer work happens. Uh, the designer work actually happens in pre-pro, that is where the game designers are busting it. Like they are working super hard, writing documentation, planning stuff. Once production starts, their workload actually comes down and then the programmers start making stuff. The artists start actually creating the assets, okay? And then the next thing is that between alpha and beta, what's happening is that um, the, program, the, the, the artists are working really hard to actually get all the art in the game. And based on the alpha testing, the programmers are implementing stuff. So that's between alpha and beta, right? Now, everybody, I think, knows what beta is. What exactly is beta, guys? Any Has anybody here ever uh, done any beta testing for a game? Anyone? No? I'm sure you have. So, so beta testing is basically when your game is kind of done. It means that features are complete, uh, the art has been implemented, and the game looks like it's done. However, it has not been tested properly. Okay, this has not been tested properly. Now, um, that's the part where they do something called beta testing. They put the game out there because if you're playing the game yourself, you know, I'm sure you love your game. But once you put it out there, once you put it out to a bigger audience, that's where the bugs, that's where the feedback, that's where all that stuff is going to come in. And which is why beta testing is really, really, really important. Now, if I have to say one thing to you guys about how you make a world-class game, Tell me at this place, okay, which one would you choose to play right now? If you have a choice, now this is you as a player, okay? I'm not talking as a game maker. As a player, if you have to make a simple, short, polished game, or you have to make a long, complex, buggy game, as a, sorry, as a player, which one would you play? Would you play the first one, a simple, short, polished game? Or would you play a long, complex, buggy game? Let me know in the chat. Because we've all, like, we, I'm sure we've played both kinds. Like, personally, um, right, so re remember this, guys. Like, remember that this is your choice. 
you have a choice. Most of the times, you can, you want to make a long, complex, polished, beautiful game. That's what you want to do, right? So remember, this is your choice. This is a choice, exactly. So now, this is you talking as a player. You would much rather play a simple, short, polished game rather than a long, complex, buggy game. So when you now take off your hat, take off your game, uh, take off your game player's hat and put on your game maker's hat. It means that you got to have something which is um, which is much more polished. And I'll, I'll tell you how you can achieve this. Right? Now, remember something really important. Um, that this part between beta and gold, you know, uh, in, it's a it's a kind of like a, a long running uh, joke in the game industry that the uh, the the part between beta and gold this is this is called road to final, okay, road to final. Now road to final is supposed to be ten percent, but it's another ninety percent. It's insane. Like this is the part where stuff gets really real for everyone because what happens practically. I'll tell you what happens practically. So in this, when you're going from beta to gold, what happens is that you're exhausted. You've been working on the game for months. It's possible you've been working on, on the game for years. If you're working for yourself or you're working with company, everyone's tired. Like you're, you will be dreaming, eating, shitting this game. Uh, you'll see in your sleep. You, you've been seeing this game for so long. Okay. And... At this point, you really have to double down and you have to polish, 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 polish. Okay, this is the part where it gets really, really hard. This is called road to final. This is the part where it makes a difference between, it makes a difference between uh, a good game and a bad game. Okay, so which is why your project planning is very, very, very important because you have to, in your mind, in your project plan, you have to leave space for polishing. What happens with most people is, and I'm talking even big companies, that they finish, like if they're supposed to finish the game and release the game in April, they start polishing in March, okay? And they're not going to have a polished game. It is not enough time. To polish your game and you do so much of hard work and your game kind of comes out bad and unpolished okay it really sucks so which is why in your mind which is why in your mind you have to leave space for polishing in your in your in your game project is like you know what let me not make this crazy big complicated beautiful game let me make this small game let me finish my game let me reach beta and then let me spend four months polishing my game and this is a mindset thing okay this is a mindset thing because you have to say i'm going to finish my going to scope it down i'm going to make something that's short snappy and i'm going to leave space for polishing because that takes a long time right now if like if there's a secret if there is a if there is a, a, a one thing that I have to say is a secret to making world-class polished games. It's this scope in such a way that you leave yourself enough time and energy. It's very hard, guys. It's really hard to do polishing because that is time you're going to be tired. You're probably going to be running out of money. People are saying, hey, why? how long are you making this game? Release, man. You've been working on this game for so long. I'm fed up. If you have a wife, she'd be saying, man, I'm fed up with this game. Your children, I'm fed up with the game. Just release a damn thing. And you're like sitting over there on your computer. You're like syncing sounds and you're syncing animations exactly to quarter seconds. Okay, like you are at that level that you're really going deep into the eye of detail of your game and you're making it beautiful. That small touch, that small detail is happening in your road, your, your road to final, okay? And usually you're tired at that time, okay? You're usually very, very tired, which is why, uh, which is why it's really hard, okay? Which is why it's really hard, okay? All right. All right. 
just give me a second. Let me see if there's anything left, or am I done with my slides? All right, I think that's what the slides are done. So what I'm going to do now is, what time is it? It's 12.25, so we have a little bit of time. I have something very interesting for you. So now I've been talking about this whole process with you guys, right? I've been talking about the, the process of pre-production. I've been talking about all this stuff. And I, I, I kind of want to like show you how it actually works. And there's no better example um, there's no, I think there's no better example than to actually show you a game that we're actually making in the gamer to make a course. So we have two teams. Um, uh, we have the 10 guys split into two different teams and we have one team which is a little bit ahead and it's run by the painter. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to actually give me a second guys. I'm going to play this. All right. Hey guys, I'm Dipinder Kaushik and I'm currently enrolled in Rahul Sir's Gamer to Maker program. In this mentorship and design program, we are um, given knowledge about game design and how to work in teams. And apart from this, we are also supposed to build actual game. And as of now, my team is working on a game called Tale of Honor and this is a chess based puzzle game with an RPG style um, environment setup and uh, what's uh, new about this game is um, I mean this is a feature that's currently being explored by various games that is in chess games you have one piece in a puzzle setting and uh, you can change your piece and play the game apart from that there's one more uh, thing that we have changed in this game that i'll uh, come to when i'll talk more about it let me first tell how um, the game started and how we are going about it so <coughs> uh, in this program we were supposed to pitch uh, various game ideas i made some pitches and likewise other team mates also made some pitches and Rahul sir really liked this game and nominated it to be one of the games we make and later on the team decided that we can go ahead with it and now we are making it so the game conceptualization started uh, long before this program but um, during this program we sat together in the team and we started writing our GDD and uh, we made some uh, demo levels which we played on paper because it's just solving puzzles so once we realized uh, once we decided what all mechanics that we want in our game and how the game should look how uh, the levels would work how the storyline would be set we started making a POC that is a proof of concept um, once we made that we um, finalized uh, our game mechanic and now we are in a stage where, where we have started making a minimal viable product an MVP and in this product uh, we, as of now I have created um, a, a plan for the team to follow and in, in this plan um, we have um, set up a, a, a cut scene that uh, will show you how we would be telling the story and then we have made um, a playable level which I have recorded for you guys and I will demonstrate uh, in a few minutes <clears throat> so the um, other different thing that is about tale of honor is apart from being a part of it being demonstrated as an RPG game where a hero is go and um, find his honor um, the game mechanic is little different and what 
uh, happens here is um, in an ordin in a normal uh, chess puzzle game, a traditional chess puzzle game or a chess game, what happens is um, you can move your player from one point to the other point, um, and uh, then basically it's a turn based. So once you do that, the opponent or the enemy responds. So, for example, now let me give it with my hands and then you will see it with the video. And what happens is, uh, let's say there's an enemy rook standing at a point and your player is standing at this point and you cross to this point. Then this rook can react. But in our game, this rook will react in real time. And when your player is crossing this line this is a kill zone for a rook so you cannot even cross this kill zone because the moment you will come here this rook is going to kill you that will happen for all the enemies if you are standing in the kill zone of an enemy you are dead that's the concept you can't even cross it the only player that can cross the kill zone is a knight because knights can actually jump so they're the only exception in this game and they're, they're also in traditional chess game because knights jump over other players so if we, if, if there's a bishop it will block the diagonals if there's a knight it will block the points around it it will if it's a rook it will block the horizontal and the vertical columns wherever the rook is standing so in in this puzzle, in this puzzle game you are supposed to turn into other players and solve the level. Uh, let me just show you the video and first you will see a cutscene, the storytelling part in which we have set up a hero and we will tell a story about him and then you will see the levels. I have played three scenarios in a level where uh, once you will win in second time you will lose and third again you will lose. You will see two different lose scenarios. So let me just play that for you. Ronan, son of Phaeron, a disgraced war veteran, living a modest life. Regretting his actions, he can do nothing but wait for his fate to give him a second chance. One day, a stranger walks in, holding that chance in his hands. As the stranger reads the scroll, Ronin's head rises, eyes brighten, and heart pounds as he prepares to earn back his honor. Now this is a sample scene, and you would see the player is currently a rook and the rook can move horizontal and vertical so you can move the enemies will react when you will uh, enter the in the kill zone so right now the he turned into a pawn and pawn can do a diagonal kill so only pawns can kill or any diagonal uh, piece can kill a rook then he turns back into a rook and moves around the kill zone of the enemy pawns the kill zone in this game is currently demonstrated by the red skulls rotating on the blocks. This is still an MVP so we might change the representation in actual game. Now you will see a loose scenario and you will see the player taps a point uh, very far from here but the moment the player entered in the kill zone of the rook, the rook kills him. And this is the another scenario. Turn into a pawn just to showcase how it works. Now we'll move ahead and enter in the kill zone of the pawn. Now, interesting thing to see here is despite um, both the pawns are uh, in each other's kill zone. Now, here this is what I wanted to show, and this was same for the um, rook as well. And both the rooks were in each other's kill zone. But when what happens in this game is the enemy gets the priority. So if you are standing in a kill zone of an enemy, the enemy will respond first and you will die. So you just have to circumnavigate around these areas and 
make your kills <coughs> apart from um, just uh, standing in particular um, blocks the in some levels as the story will progress or the game will progress um, the enemies would also start um, patrolling the area so what you will see like in this um, uh, level you can see that there's a log here and then there's a missing piece here and like here this is a missing piece and this is a log so these are blocking the areas or uh, the kill zones of the enemy so what will happen is if you if the player is uh, the enemy is uh, patrolling these areas then you will you can take cover behind these blocks and missing pieces and because they break the trail and you can cross the kill zones of the areas and then of the players and enemies and then um, you, will, you can make progress so these are some of the mechanics and there are some more interesting mechanics that um, are there in this game apart from just moving around and changing shapes um, uh, wait for those and uh, in the future uh, previews and uh, demonstrations we will showcase more pieces and more scenarios and environments this is an effort of, of a small team and I hope it turns out to be a really good venture um, in Rahul sir's guidance and yeah keep um, look out for this and follow us and follow the progress of this game and support us um, to make it a uh, success. Thank you and thanks for watching. All right, all right, guys. Um, can you hear me? So that was that was awesome. That was that was really really nice. Uh, I didn't really get a chance to actually see that. It's first time seeing it. Well presented, uh, the painter. Thank you. That was awesome. Claps. And I'm so proud of I'm so proud of uh, of my of these guys. To be honest, like the painter has a uh, nice thing that he actually has a fair bit of experience. You know, it's nice to have experience. So nice thing is that in, in the game of course, we have this the experienced people who have actually been making games for years. So Dependia's Dependia's quite senior. He has been um, making games. He owns his own company. He's making hyper casual games, and then so it means that he can actually give guidance to uh, to the younger people. Like that is really really nice. And this game is shaping up really nicely. Um, let me see if I can actually. Um, let me see if I can actually go and uh, put my put the. I'll show you the. I'll show you the Discord. Let me share my screen with you guys. So what what it looks like uh, to actually right. So if you can see my screen. This is kind of the workflow, and I'm really proud of these guys. They are working on a game. They're working together, working as a team. So, oops, no audio. Crap. Okay, is the audio back now? Sorry about that. I can hear you. Oh, you can. Working as a team. Okay. All right. So, um, 
Right. So here's the thing. There's one question here. Oh, no, they couldn't hear me. Okay, they couldn't hear me. But can you guys hear me now? Uh, hopefully. Oops. The audio seems good. That's oh, fine. Okay. Fine. Yeah. All right. So, some questions over here. So, how was that, guys? Wasn't that cool? I'm so proud of these guys. That was that game was looking really good, um, wasn't it? So, looking forward to that, and hopefully it'll be on the Discord server soon. So, the idea is that um, the games which are made by the people here, uh, the teams here, are going to be on the server. You guys will be able to play them, and. Uh, you know, those games are going to be put out there. We're going to, you know, I'm going to be personally helping the polished games to kind of be put out there on the market and learning how to market the games, teaching them how to do that stuff is all part of the course. So that's going to be coming soon. So looking at everybody's cooperation Just for that. explain the, the, the Discord party or not audible when you were talking about uh, Okay. So the Discord part. I was just basically showing you the Discord and showing you how it was set up. Cool. Anyway, so um, some questions here. Okay, so, so Dinesh is asking about multiplayer. So we had this discussion, okay? We had, we had, uh, somebody says we can, now we can hear you. Okay, so there was actually a big discussion about multiplayer, right? Whether this bitch makes this game multiplayer or not. And then what happened was that that was a scope discussion and there was a complexity discussion. And we kind of really, I, I put it to them saying, guys, you guys can make it multiplayer. If you want to make it multiplayer, I'll support you. Um, you know, we we'll have we we have tech mentors um, for the course as well, and um, I told them that if you want to go for multiplayer, we'll do it. We'll get someone, but it's going to be much more complicated. It's going to be a lot more work. And they made a conscious choice to actually not go for multiplayer. They decided to go for single player and. The idea is at some point if the game does well, we can actually make it a multiplayer game. And that I really respect that choice um, because they made a very... That's scope, guys. Like, that scope. Instead of just making some crazy-ass big project for the entire world, they said, you know what? Let's scope down. Let's choose something that we can actually make. They decided to cut the multiplayer feature, and that was awesome. That is what making world-class games is all about. You can't do everything you want to make. You need to choose, and you need to focus there. So, um, all right. Let's see. Okay. All right, guys. So, let's see where we are now. Let's see what the time is. Um, so, it is 12.42 now. Okay, and I mean, my, my throat is also packing up. So I'm going to go and um, grab uh, a quick bit of lunch now. Okay, so um, I think it's 12.45. And after what's going to happen is that today, what's happening is that Chennai has floods. Okay, and Josh is, I don't know if he's going to be able to make it because he has no power and... He has no internet since last night. And as he called me in the morning saying, Rahul, my phone is at 15%. I have no internet. I have no power. Um, so we're going to have uh, a question and answer after lunch. Okay. We're going to have a good Q&A session. And then after we have the Q&A session, we're going to be launching into the careers part. Okay. The careers part is going to be where... Um, we shift from the process of game development into game careers. And I'm going to be talking about how you guys can actually find your fastest path. Because everyone has different wants. Somebody wants to be a programmer. Somebody wants to be an artist. Somebody wants to um, start their own game company. Somebody wants to, um, you know, be a consultant. Everyone has a different career goal. And of course, everyone wants to do it faster. So I'm going to be telling you some fundamentals um, about how you can find your fastest career path. And that's going to be for the afternoon. And fingers crossed, I'm hoping that if the lights come back on, Josh can actually join us. Um, but fingers crossed, like I said, it's, it's flooded in Chennai. And I just hope he's okay. But in any case, Josh is an instructor Josh is a mentor for the game to make a course and he's he's there on the channel so whether or not he comes I'm not sure in any case we will definitely be having a live with him uh, so these lives are going to be kind of like more um, uh, these guys are going to be more frequent 
So after lunch, I'm going to be talking about salaries uh, in the game industry. I'm going to be talking about the courses, and I'm, I'm going to be talking a little bit about tools as well. Okay, about which the best tools for you. So I will. Let's take a break now, guys. Uh, have a good lunch, grab something to eat, and I will see you at 2 p.m. Okay, I will see you guys at 2 p.m. All right. Let's go.
Hello, 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 people. What is up? What's going on? We're getting back. I hope everybody had a had some lunch, maybe even took a nap. I need a nap. I had to take a quick nap because um, I was up till I think two o'clock uh, last night, and I have this little guy of mine who's one and a half year old, and he's something of an early riser. So if the days he gets up at six o'clock, it's like, whoa, I got to sleep in today. Like, I'm not kidding. The days I get up at six o'clock in the morning is a special event. Everybody's like, wow, man, I got to sleep at 6 a.m. And today it was a very special day. He gave me a special treat uh, by waking up at 4.30. So, yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. Uh, two and a half hours of sleep. So I definitely had to take my 15-20 minute power nap. Power naps are awesome. Power naps are absolutely awesome. So, um, yeah, so while we are here, while, we, while we're here, um, I, I would say we have a Discord, right, in which I've asked a question. So what we're going to do is that tonight I'm going to have a kind of like open house we had it last night for all. So it's something of a something of a tradition. So what we all do is that we uh, we hang out, uh, we hang out in Discord, and we kind of you ask questions. We'll talk about things. Because here it's more me uh, me talking to you, and over there it's kind of like uh, we can chit chat, etc. And I have a bunch of questions. So what I think I think what I'll do right now is that I have a bunch of questions which I have posted on Discord. So while we wait for um wait wait for people to come back, I'm gonna kind of start answering uh some of those questions, guys. Okay. Um all right. Let's start with what does it take to be a director? Uh somebody called B B like Adi asks what is it like uh what does it take to be a director in a big gaming company what kind of skills should i have now i'm not sure adi if you understand um if you understand what exactly it's like maybe when you say director i think you mean designer because it seems to be a little bit confusion between the, between the movie industry and the game industry there is actually no role like director uh directors are in movies um in in the game industry, you actually have designers, lead designers, right? So if you want to be a lead designer, I would say I, I take that to be lead designer, and I'll answer the question on the basis of lead designer. If you want to be a lead designer, firstly you have to have a very strong grasp of the fundamentals of of game design. Obviously, if you want to be a design director, that one is obvious, but uh, I'll tell you something, a uh, little anecdote. So about five, six years ago, um, I was called in to a game company which was having problems with the design team and the creative team. Now, designers, creative people, artists are very, very notorious in the game industry in the sense that they're very difficult to handle. I know people who have, uh, like that particular company which I was hired, they had, I think in, in two years, they had a four or five design leads coming and going because artists and designers are very, very temp temperamental and they're always creative problems. They're always uh, personality clashes. Okay, like compared to that, programmers are kind of much more chill in the sense that they get along. And um, yeah, yeah, but I don't think so. I don't think... I, yeah. So, which is why I'm taking director in uh, in that in sense. So, sense yeah, no, I don't think that person knows at the business sense. Um, but anyway, so basically, I'm, I'm telling you what it takes to lead in a creative role. If you want to lead in a creative role, you have to be this, I, I like to call it this benevolent tyrant. So, my team 
like the one thing I will say is that my team has people in my entire company. I have the best attrition rate, which is zero almost. In fact, I've lost one guy left in seven years from my team. Like one guy has quit and he's gone to another company for a high salary because he was getting married. And last day he wanted to come back to my team. Okay, so that's something I'm pretty proud of. My team has zero attrition, whereas the other teams in the company are kind of leaving. And what it takes, I'll be honest with you, like you can't be this chilled, laid back person. You have to be firm, but you have to take care of your people. Okay, like you have to get the job done. Uh, and I know a lot of people who get the job done by squeezing their own subordinates by making them work long hours. And that's not something that I do. I take care of my people. I'm not a company person. I take care of my people and the work happens. So as a creative, you have to be this benevolent tyrant. Whenever people step out of line, you have to, uh, you know, to take action. Handling creative teams is not easy, which is why I was hired. And then my boss said, okay, I finally, finally found someone who can actually handle this. So he says, hey, Rahul, I've started as a consultant uh, for three hours. And he's like, hey, can you work? Uh, can you can you work six hours? I said, okay, double my salary. So he said, okay. And then he says, can you work nine hours? Okay, can you triple my salary? He said, okay. So that's kind of what happened. Uh, and th that was kind of like my way uh, into the casino game industry. So that's what it takes to be a director. Uh, you have to, like, you have, you have to lead people. You have to lead people, which means you have to get along with people. If you're not a people person, don't do design, right? Don't do design. Don't be a, des like, don't try and be uh, a, a design lead because all a designer has to do is talk to people. Okay. Most of my time in my company, sometimes I have to talk to a developer who's not understanding something really basic. I have to sit down, I have to take a deep breath. Okay, I'm going to explain this to you once again. What happens is that when the player clicks this button, this particular thing is going to happen. And then that particular this thing is going to happen. And this is how the player has to feel. And then this animation happens that goes over there. And then the screen comes on here and... This is the way this animation, this flies from here with a little trail. That's what I do, right? And that's what I get paid for. So explaining things to people in the way that they understand is a designer's basic job. Okay, now let's take another question. Sorry? Yeah. So also, I think as as usual, my wife has a great point that now if you want to get to, uh, if you if you want to get to the director's level, right? The one thing you have to understand is that if you want to reach around a lakh rupees in salary per month, you have to lead people. If you want to go from one to three and four, you have to be a business leader, right? You have to understand the business and you have to be able to contribute and take the company's business goals goal forward, which is kind of how you get into that uh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 4 lakh rupees a month bracket. So when you get to director level, you're not just a person managing people. You're, you're somebody who's managing a business, which means that you have to kind of really understand the business of games. Um, Oh yeah, so somebody this is good. So achieving a job is game designer requirements, skill, strategy. The one thing I will say here is that, and this is going to kind of uh, this kind of it hurts a little bit to say this is that if you want to be a game designer, guys, your English has to be good. Okay, like there's no way around that. I meet a lot of people who want to be game designers um, and who are not very fluent they're confident they know their stuff they know games but they are not confident in english so your english has to be good because if you're working for a multinational company you will be talking to people from all over the world and you will be communicating in english and you will not just be communicating um through talking you'll be communicating through documents so which means that your documentation skills have to be really good you have to be able to write well so you have to be a designer is is i think a designer is 70 percent writer and 30 percent talker 
for writing stuff and talking is what you get paid for. So if you're if you're a designer, also you need to have good knowledge of games. Okay, if you want to be a game designer, you need to have a game library in your mind. So it means that if you're like, oh, I want to be a game designer and I only play Counter Strike and I really play Counter Strike, that's probably not going to work because you have to have. Uh, uh, okay, so the questions are. Gameter is asking where can you post questions. You can post your questions here uh, totally. And at night, we're going to have a, a Discord uh, session. You can post them there. You, you can totally post your uh, post your questions here and I'll try and answer them. So your, your English has to be good. And it doesn't mean that if, if it's not good at this point, you can't be a designer. Like you can train yourself. You can study, you can get better, you can read, you can read books, newspapers. There are courses which you can take to improve your English uh, and you can kind of in increase your knowledge in game by playing games of different genres um, as well. So that's the thing if you want to be a, uh, a designer. Okay. Um, guidance for first time game developers like do's and don'ts. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by game developers. But uh, like I said, Josh uh, is a really good person for that. But he's not here today. However, he is going to be, we're going to be doing a live with him at the earliest next opportunity. So keep an eye out for that on the Discord server. Right. Uh, Epic Me Kurush asks, what do recruiters see while, uh, uh, what do recruiters see while hiring freshers uh, apart from portfolio and what are the key points to crack? Um, okay, uh, what do recruiters see while hiring freshers apart from portfolio and what are the key points to crack an interview? I would say uh, in an interview, anybody who's hiring you has a problem and they want to need, know if you can solve their problem. Right, you're hired because you have a problem such as we have a new game project coming. We have, like in my company, we recently started a whole line of projects, uh, which are really quick turnaround games. And so we're actually hiring people for that specific thing. So there's a specific problem. Try and find out what the specific problem is that they're having, and then try and explain to them how you can solve that problem. If you're a developer, how can you apply yourself to making the kind of games that they want. It's possible that they want to make this line of game, which is really quick, kind of almost copies of other games. And you can explain how you've done that or how you could do that. So you're solving a problem. You have to convince them that you will be able to solve a problem. OK. Uh, OK. Uh, Joyson has uh, put his hands into the hornet's nest here. Uh, by saying, what is the current atmosphere of AAA companies in India? Open kimono. So, okay, so I'll, I'll be kind of like super honest here. Uh, when, when you say AAA companies in India, you are, it's, it's, a, it's a prestige role in the sense that you can, you can tell people that you work for XYZ company, you can tell people you work for EA, you can tell people, oh, I work for Ubisoft, you can tell people I work for Rockstar, I work for a AAA company in India, and, and that's great. So I'll talk about the good stuff first. You, it looks great on your resume, right? Um, firstly, you can, you get the swag, you'll probably get the cup and the backpack and stuff, and you can, you'll have a nice workspace, okay, in the sense that Everything will be branded. You'll probably have a lounge where you can play, play games, and you'll have a cafeteria. And you'll have all that stuff, okay? And you probably have a pretty decent salary, right? You probably have a pretty decent salary, which is maybe at the level or, or above uh, other studios because they can afford it, all right? And that's the positive stuff. But when it comes to creativity, it's going to be, Bad, bad. Because essentially what AAA games do in India is that all their like super back end stuff is in India. Like there is a certain company which I'm not going to name, uh, which is based in Hyderabad, which is quite famous, where mobile games go to die in that studio. 
So it is a mobile game. It was released 10 years ago. Uh, and it's kind of really at the end of its life cycle. It's like you, when you have a, when you buy an, uh, an orange and you kind of squeeze the juice out of it and you're like, man, this is all it was really expensive. Let me like squeeze the last drops. And when you're like, when you're really squeezing that orange to get the last few drops out, that's what they do with their mobile games, right? Almost nothing comes over there um, to that particular studio. Similarly, for especially for, for like Ubisoft, etc., they do all um, the back end stuff. When it comes to art, design, etc., there's not much creativity, is what I'm saying. So also, when you join a AAA company, you will be doing really specialized roles, okay? You will be, for example, like, you'll be, like, texturing tires. You'll be texturing the rims of tires all day <clears throat> till you're, like, like, the best tire rim texturing person uh, in, in, in the country, right? So you'll be kind of doing something really, really deep in a AAA company in India. Now, I have friends from VFS who are in AAA companies in the US and Canada who are doing amazing work, right? They're like in there, they're systems designers, uh, they're architects, they're doing gameplay, all that stuff, okay? But the reality is that in India, our scope, what we get to work on is limited. That's the reality, right? Now, if you can find a way to move abroad, et cetera, it's different, but if you're gonna stay in India, you're mostly gonna be working on mobile games and there's actually a lot of creativity there, okay? There's actually a lot of creativity there. Um, there's a lot you can actually do in mobile game companies. Uh, I'll talk a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about that, about that later, okay? Uh, Vishal is asking which department for fresh air can easily enter into game industry? <coughs> testing, testing is like boom. You don't need a portfolio. Um, you don't even need pants. <laughs> I mean, like you can become a tester really soon. But the thing with test, testing is not like you're going to be hanging out and playing video games all day. Well, you will be playing video games all day, but it's hard work. Like you're going to be doing weird things. You're going to be like trying to find bugs by crashing your car into every single... Like when I was at, at uh, well, QA in, in, in Vancouver at Piranha Games, like... I used to like take my car on the side of the track and like reverse drag it over the whole track to try and find a place it would get stuck. Like, I would do that for three days and that's not so much fun. But that's what testers do, okay? If testing is hard work, but it's... Uh... Okay. Um, do we get a guide while joining a game industry? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by guide. But which is uh, which is what I'm here for, right? The gamer to make a course, and my mentoring program, which I'm going to be talking about, is specifically to guide you guys to enter the game industry and make games and get jobs and achieve your goals, right? Um, what is the best age to start learning C sharp? Now. Now, like wherever you are, whatever you're doing, start learning it. Like, there's no such thing as a pace. Even if in like class ten, uh, do it. Okay. Um, I had a bad experience from a game design degree, and now I'm afraid of game design as a good career. Should I follow my passion or leave it? You, of course, follow it. Of course, you have to follow it. Game design. Game designers are among the highest salaries in the game industry in India. There's a huge shortage because everyone was doing B tech. Everyone's parents saying, "Beta, go and do B tech. What is a design design? Go and become an engineer." So people, there are no designers. Very few designers, especially in senior positions. Like you can almost demand a salary and they'll give it to you. So game designers are really in heavy demand, and if you're good, you'll make it. Okay. Um, what are the skills that a level, des level designer uh, needs to have? Okay, a level designer um, is a subset of game design. And for level design, you have to have very good situational awareness. You have to have... Um, you have to be able to put yourself in the player's shoes, play the game repeatedly. You have to be really, really good with feedback. For a level designer, you have to develop the art of looking at a player doing something and playing your game and then take feedback from that. Because level design is something which is very, very subtle. 
uh, people are not going to tell you what's going on. They're just going to do things in the game and they're going to mess up and they're going to like abandon your game and you have to be able to find out what's going on. Okay, so that's the thing with, uh, with level designers. Um, uh, can I make my portfolio as showreel? Well, there should be a showreel in your portfolio, but your portfolio can't just be a showreel. Right, a showreel is a great way of kind of getting all the stuff in your portfolio and showing it really quickly. But it's not that like, okay, I made a showreel and that's my portfolio done. That's um, that's not going to happen. Um, what are the best online institutes to learn video game programming? Um, if you, if you uh, probably, if you come on Discord at night, um, uh, I'll try and answer that question there. Every big studio asks for experience, even though my portfolio is good, I meet the, uh, I meet the requirements. Um, it seems like your portfolio isn't good enough. Like you think your portfolio is good enough, but they obviously don't. It's possible that you may have a lot of small games. It's may that it's possible that you have like small, 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 small games, like one tiny little shooter, which is made by yourself, or maybe you have like six, seven, eight games like this, or a couple of game jam games. It's possible you have all these small, 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 small games in your portfolio, and they're not impressed because these are games. Right. Um, so it's possible that you have too many small games or it's possible that you're applying for the wrong job. It's possible that your portfolio is not focused towards, uh, is not focused towards the job you want. It's possible your portfolio is too, too general. It's too general. So maybe like, maybe if you, if you want to post your portfolio on the discord server, uh, which there's actually a special channel for that. Um, maybe we can help that. Um, all right. Uh, is there any chance for commerce graduates to get into a programming job? Dude, you can be anything. Like, it doesn't matter what you did in college. It doesn't matter if you did science. It doesn't matter if you did biology. It doesn't matter if you, what you've done in college. Like, you have to show that you know the role. Make a game, you know, make a game. I have people in my, in, in I have people in Game to Maker with such diverse backgrounds who who make games i'm a mercenary officer who makes games right so doesn't matter where you're coming from you have to learn the skills it doesn't doesn't nobody's gonna say oh you're from a commerce background but you're a great programmer i'm not gonna hire you they're like no i don't care what background you have i don't care what you learned in school as long as you have the skills as long as you can show me you know how to make games and you have a decent portfolio you're in right when can you join is that you can start learning game yeah, so give it to asking again. If I, if I start learning, if I start learning uh, game design, how long will it take to get an entry role in a company like Zynga? Hmm. Um, I guess if if you see if you want a job at a company like Zynga, you have to show them that you're good at free to play game design. Okay, you can't just be like, oh, I, I made this random shooter uh, um, using Unreal and I have this other kind of like, uh, I don't know, third person runner uh, that I made you doing a, you know, a YouTube video and I'm on a job. They'll be like, okay, what do you know about free to play game design? So, which means that, you know, for example, you could get together and join a group where you make a simple free to play game in which you have monetization, you have a decent code loop, you have a decent, uh, you know, you have decent meta and you actually make maybe a little bit of money, get some, get some players, get some users, build your user base, learn that stuff. And then you show them that in your portfolio, right? That's what you have to do to get a job at Zynga. Show them that you know how to make their kind of games. And you could do that in a year. So like my promise to people in Game to Maker is become, become a game 
dev professional in one year or less. That's my promise, right? So when it comes to timelines, if you're focused, if you're dedicated, if you if you do stuff in a year or less, you will be a professional game maker, right? That's my promise. Um, okay. All right. Uh, we're coming. People are coming back. Hello, everyone. Did you finish the Instagram? Huh? Did you finish the Instagram? No, I'm just answering. Um, 11 standard, what skill do I need to develop? The skill that you need to develop is that you need to make a game in which you do level design. That's it. The only way to learn how to be a level designer is to do level design in a game. Okay, one last anecdote um, and then I'll start. So, uh, very interesting and it's a topic of level design. So Vancouver Film School, um, so the way it works is that you have six months of, five or six months of theory, etc. classes, and then you have to form your game teams in the class. There are 16 people, there were 16 people in my class, and then you have to like, among yourselves, get together and form teams. So early on, people, hey dude, like you want to work with me, let's make a project, so this stuff happens, this like, you know, getting together. So, and there were five of us uh, who kind of got together, um, to form a team like from all over the world. I was Indian, somebody from the UK, one Canadian guy, one Thai guy, uh, you know, one Persian guy. So we all got together and uh, everybody was like, I want to be level designer. <laughs> I want to do level design. And I want to be level designer. Like I wanted to do level design and everybody's like, I want to be level designer. And so we were like, okay, we'll have to figure out who's going to be level designer. And what happened was that as soon as the game teams were formed, there was a summer holiday uh, for I think about three weeks or so. And so we formed the teams and we came up with a game idea uh, about the game. And then, okay, let's break. And then we'll come back after three weeks and we'll start working on the documentation and the game idea and all that kind of thing. Like, we'll take it forward. Let's relax. You know what I did? I was home 21 days. I, and I was just thinking about the game and I was thinking about the levels. And... I started sketching them. Can, can you give me my, my box? My BFS box? Yeah. B, it's got BFS stuff. Here we go. Yeah, this is, this is an interesting story. So I was at home, okay? for 21 days uh, in Vancouver. And I was like, man, I really want, like, I really want to be, uh, I really want to be a level designer. And everybody wanted to be a level designer. And how do I do this? I'll show you how I did it. So I started drawing sketches for our game. Okay. And how many do I have here? So these are the sketches. I still have them in my little box. So it was a, it was side-scrolling game. And so I started making sketches. Okay. I started making sketches. Wait. So I started making sketches for the game. So I need to out. So these are my sketches that I had made on a graph paper. Okay. Uh, this is a game that it was kind of like a it was a vampire. It's like a crazy game. But if you like maybe tonight I'll share the post. So these are my level design sketches that I made in my holidays. Okay. Like I didn't have to do that but I really wanted to be level designer. So I was thinking about the levels. I was thinking about the game. I was thinking about what was going to be in there. And, and that was it. So these are my sketches. Okay, these are my sketches. Can you see? From about 12 years ago. So I made all these sketches for my game. And then, uh, and then school opened and the team got together and everybody's like, okay, Let's decide who's going to be a level designer. And I was like, I just like I dropped this stack of levels on the table. And I'm like, hey, guys, I made some levels. <laughs> okay. And they looked at this and they were like, I guess you're the level designer. Right. 
So that's how I got the job. I didn't get the job by saying, I'm, I'm cool, like, I'm, I'll give you some level that I'll find it. No, I did the work. I designed the levels, like, I made them, I was thinking about the levels, I did it. Like, guys, this is a very, 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 very practical place. Game making, you got to do it, okay? You got to do it, which is why... Um, like I've designed gamer to make it to be a cone where you just do it. Like you saw the painter today. Um, that was this is three. This is four months in the course. This is what they have, right? It's not like six months. I'm gonna give you some fundamentals and talk about this and talk about that. No, like the second month you're doing it. You're actually learning stuff and you're implementing it in your game. You have to do stuff practically. Okay. Um, Uh, do the engines you use to make the games in your portfolio play a role depending where you get hired? Vedant, and I would say, yeah, because see, what's going to happen is that you're going to go into a company and they're going to have an engine, right? And the truth is in India, and mostly the dominant engine is, is Unity. So if you have experience in Unity, what's going to happen is that you're going to start like you're gonna enter the company and nobody will have to hold your hand and like teach you the tool. You know the basics. So people like nobody's gonna to have to hold your hand and like teach you the fundamentals. You're gonna start pretty fast, even if you're a fresher. If you use Unity, you know how prefabs work, you know how scenes work, like it's gonna be boom, you're gonna be in there, right? Um, so definitely if you want if you wanna get hired, uh, you know, I would say uh, in India, especially in mobile games, if you have Unity experience, that's gonna increase your chances of getting a job, for sure. Uh, first, suppose I get into a studio, should I have everything on my own, or will there be a guide to guide me how to do the stuff? So here's the thing, it depends, right? If you're lucky, you get into a studio, there's someone helpful who helps you out, and you know, you get more time. But that may not always happen, right? It may happen that you join a studio where, like, there's nobody really to help you. And, like, I, I forgot to mention, like, the bigger the studio, the worse the politics. Um, so AAA studios are known for crazy politics. Like, I know personally people who are in really high positions who are fantastically, spectacularly incompetent. And it only happened because they know a lot of people in high positions in the company. It happens. I've seen it happen so many times. I like I've seen studios go down the toilet because people in high positions were super incompetent. And all you have to do is know the right people and know nobody can kick you out. So politics, the higher up you go, the bigger company, the politics gets insane. Okay. Um, politics really bad. Um, do you recommend the Godot game engine for search development? Yes, definitely, definitely I do. Godot is awesome. Um, it's especially if uh, if you're not that hot uh, for uh, for coding as well. I definitely, I definitely recommend Godot. All right, guys. So I think um, let's kind of get into it. So now I said I would talk about careers. I would talk about how you can find your fastest path into the game industry. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you some fundamental, some fundamental principles. Okay. Now it's going to be about your career and some of this is going to sting um, because some of your illusions are going to be shattered and you might be sitting in your bed like this at night saying, oh my God, what happens? But, you know, but let's do this. Let's go. Okay. So, um, see, you have to learn from the mistakes of others. Okay. And that's really not easy. It happens to me that someone tells me, someone who's more, they says, Rahul, what you're doing is going to cause trouble. I don't think it's a good idea. I've done this and it doesn't work. And there's a part of me which says, Dad, but I'm better than you, dude. I'm not you. I can do this. I can totally do this. And the guy's like, all right, man. And then I went off and something bad happened. I was like, yeah, you know, you were right. But I had to learn this the hard way. I had to learn this myself. And that's fine. But 
that costs time. That costs money. Now, this there's, there's something called opportunity cost. Okay. I don't know if you know what that means, but I'll tell you what opportunity cost is. So opportunity cost is um, say suppose you decide to self-learn and you decide to like, okay, this I'm not gonna I, I like I don't have the time, I'm not gonna go and do a structured learning. I'm gonna learn this stuff on my own. And maybe you're like, you know, I, I don't wanna buy a course or I don't wanna invest money. I can save money by kind of sitting at home and doing stuff for free on the internet on YouTube, right? I'm saving money. What's happening is that if you had invested in a course, or if you had invested in something to actually have a structured learning, you would have, you would have learned that in six months, and maybe at the end of nine months you've gotten a job. However, you spent maybe two years learning that same thing, which means that that you know that's uh, two years, that's twenty-four minus nine, which is I think fifteen. You lost 15 months salary. That was your opportunity cost. So in those two years that you were learning by yourself, saving money, you lost. Even if you say, suppose you make 20,000 rupees a month, right? 20,000 rupees a month in 215 is like, you lost three lakhs. You lost three lakhs. Like you were trying to save a lakh rupees, but you lost three lakh rupees in opportunity cost. Okay, so opportunity cost is the stuff that you you couldn't get. The stuff that's the stuff that you lost when you were trying something else. So opportunity cost is really a thing, right? And if you're gonna make the more mistakes you make, the longer you take, the longer your path is to getting into the game industry and getting a job, achieving your goals, your opportunity cost is going to increase. And it might seem like you're saving money and stuff but you're not okay opportunity cost is really really a thing now um so the biggest problem is expectations versus reality right we all have expectations like we have a uh expectation of what it's like to make games we are see you know there's a reason i've called the course gamer to maker because when you're a gamer you love video games, okay? You love video games and you know video games and you think you are like, you know it all like, man, I play video games. I understand them so well. So it should be easy to make them, right? Right? No, that's a surprising thing. You can be this really experienced person who understands video games in great depth and love them and has a great passion for them and you play like, many many different kinds of video games and genres however you may suck at actually making games and making games which other people want to play it's it's not the same skill it's not the same skill okay so which is why i'm gonna take from gamer to maker there is a huge mindset change expectation and reality is very very different okay so I have some kind of fundamental principles that I'm going to tell you about, um, which are like, if you follow these principles, you will achieve your goals in the game industry. No questions asked. Okay. First one is your career may not follow the script that you have written for it. So it's possible that you have an idea of what your career is going to be like. Right. You say, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a job at a AAA company and then I'm going to work on a game like Uncharted and then I'm going to, and I'm going to do level design for a game like Uncharted and then in five years I'm going to become a design director and then I'm going to become a creative director and then I'm going to move to that particular kind of game, that country and I'm going to do this and all. And that's great, right? But there's a 95% chance that your path is going to be very, very different, right? Because life and because reality. So you and you've got to be prepared for that, okay? And you've got to be prepared for that. A lot of people have this uh, idea of what the game industry is and what they want to do. And not only that, they, they, they have a very specific genre that they want to play. And it, like... People who play AAA games, people who play PC games, console games, more complex games, 
they don't really want to work on games that are a bit more simple, like hyper casual or ca- casual game, etc. Because they consider them to be below, they, like not they're not really games, dude. Like you know, and my thing to them is, you're gonna have a really hard time. You're gonna have a really hard time because you have to learn to find the fun. Now, this is a fundamental which I like to use, and it's my own thing. And it's called find the fun. I'll give you an example, right? Um, finished with Dan from School, uh, done, and uh, th- that time it was like the financial crash of 2008, so uh, employment was hard to find. But I managed to get, like, I, in my batch, there was one internship open at Piranha Games, and I managed to get it. And it was a little tester, it was a QA tester, and I got in. And I'm like, yeah, my first job, super excited. I walk into the studio, hello everyone, blah, blah, blah. And so I say, okay, this is your tester, this is, you're sitting down, this is your, there's a PC with a controller, and they were making a racing game. They were making a NASCAR, they were making a, a NASCAR racing game. Uh, and I would test it. And guess what? I didn't play racing games. <laughs> I, 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 I was more a shooter, uh, you know, shooter, um, adventure game kind of guy, puzzle games, uh, it's such a skill game kind of guy. And But I never actually really played uh, a racing game. And I was like, okay. And I'm the tester and I start playing game. I start playing racing game. I can't complete a race. Like my car crashes because I can't, I'm, I'm, I suck at driving. And my car keeps crashing and everybody is looking, a new tester doesn't know how to play video games, okay? And it was really embarrassing. Um, but I kept on. And in a week, I think it took me five days to actually finish my first race. And in five days, I finished my race. And I got better. And I got better. And then one day, I was enjoying racing games. Like, I was really into it. I was really into it. And then, believe it or not, in a few months, my timings, like, you know, when the game is released, you have to set the, you have to set the timings to beat uh, the high school, etc. So my timings were actually used for the school because I was the best in the entire studio at playing those games because I used to be playing them all the time and I found the fun. So what I'm trying to say here is that you need to find the fun. Okay, you need to find the fun in a game that you don't like, that you think, oh, this game's terrible. You know, you need to be able to pick up a game that you don't like and learn how the players find it fun and adopt it, adopt something that you look down upon. If you can do that, okay, if you can do that, if you can find the fun in a genre that you don't really like to play, that is a freaking superpower. Okay, so remember that your career may not follow the follow the path you expected. In the beginning, you may have to do stuff that you perhaps don't want to do. You may be given opportunities that you might look down upon. I would say take them. Take them, okay? And find the fun, find the joy. And then you might just start liking that and that may be your thing. Or perhaps you'll move on. And if you do that, you will be a richer and you'll be a uh, richer, I mean, not financially, but maybe that too. Like as a player, as you as, ex- as a video game professional, you will have more experience of not just playing one genre on one platform. You'll have, you'll know more stuff and that will make you a more valuable professional in the game industry. Okay. And that's really a thing. Um, right. Now, next Next fundamental principle that you guys need to realize is that games need to make money, right? This may seem quite obvious, like, duh, of course, games need to make money, but it means that creativity is going to be in the back seat, okay? Creativity is going to be in the back seat of the game development car. And guess who is going to be in the driving seat? So if creativity is in the back, who is driving?
money paisa mula the the driver seat and it's not just for big companies man like i know indies who have made it okay i have one of my students and you know what i'm i'm going to probably bring him on someday he's awesome he lives in hyderabad his name is satish he's one guy okay he runs this company called tpot studios he was my student at backstage pass um he's one guy and he like he's solo he's one of the few guys i'm like man this solo developer who's made it and he has his genre that like he makes simulation games for android that's his thing and he's taken 3 4 years to do it and he just keeps delivering like games with 5 6 million downloads okay he he's taking simulation he's a military simulation he made a game with a v22 osprey the harrier then he like he now he's making flight simulators and that's his thing that's his genre he's hit it so he he's not thinking oh i don't think flight i don't you know flight simulator is not cool but like this is what i know this is making money let's do it right so games have to make money okay and you have to your creativity has to be in a space which can make money and get players okay so remember that if you want to go forward you have to understand that fundamental that the business of games is very very important to learn if you want to go far if you want to be a business leader even if you want to be like director of your own studio or some other studio you have to understand the business of games so how do you do that you do that by firstly realizing that it's really important and whenever you have an opportunity hanging out with people being in meetings talking to people keep your eyes open don't just like blank out and be like ah that's marketing stuff that's like ah business stuff i'm a designer i'm a developer that stuff is not important no if you want to rise if you want to go far keep your eyes open uh learn that stuff okay um super important let's see if any questions here okay so joyson of all the aspiring developers you come across what is the ratio of the people who follow through their game dev journey as opposed to people who just lose interest and drop out that's a good question um i would say think is the people who kind of reach me are uh, at a little bit stage in their career so i would say um even at game colleges right teaching at game colleges um now if you at a game college you already committed like you've actually paid money to go to game college even at a game college i would say 50% don't actually get into the game industry they kind of they go off and they do something else they go back to what they were doing or whatever because like making games is heartbreaking it can be heartbreaking okay it can be heartbreaking it, it like it can consume you and it can break your heart and that you like man like i've tried it um and it didn't work out and like it, it can really burn a lot of people and i've seen that happen a lot which is why i i like to tell people the truth straight up front i'm not one of those guys who would be like yeah this is awesome it's all fun and games everything is awesome come on in it's just fun it's beautiful you play video games all day it's a great time you're going to get it no it's intense it's crazy it consumes you like it's it's very meaningful but it's hard okay and your expectations have to be right um okay love got love like on says ouch i'm not sure what that ouch for because i've given a lot of reason for ouches today i think um yeah yeah exactly marketing is in the driving seat you're right marketing well money is marketing right if you market your game nailed it man marketing is in the driving seat with its with its floor to the pedal um okay all right next up um okay next up this is very interesting give me a second so okay next up um another interesting one is that teamwork is a superpower teamwork is a superpower 
So the one thing I'm going to say is that there is a lot of unnecessary romanticizing of solo game development. Okay, because um, what happens is that, it, especially in like uh, people, creative people, a lot of us like we like to be by ourselves like we don't really like being with people we're like dude i just want to sit in my room with my laptop and my cat and like i like to do my own thing dealing with people for a lot of us is really hard like it's like to to talk to people and collaborate with them and deal with their crap is really really hard so i think i'll just do it by myself because that guy got a million downloads with that particular game and he did it. He's a solo developer, so I can do it, right? That's the logic. Solo development is really, and especially more in the West, solo development is really, really romanticized. It's this thing that any dude, anybody can make game. You can just sit by yourself at home, your laptop down on Unity and you can make a successful career making video game all by yourself as a solo developer. And my take on that is yes, you can, but the chances of that are roughly the same as your being hit by a meteorite in your sleep. Okay, which is not much because of something called survivor bias. Okay, survivor bias means that you only hear the success stories out there, okay? And, um, and and also you don't hear about all of the success story, right? 99% of projects, solo projects, they fail. They fail to be completed. They fail, even if they're completed, they fail to make any money or even recover the money for the person, okay? And... The one person, I don't know, point one person that make it, they get really blown up, okay? And the truth is that even in the success stories, all the truth is out there. Like I know people who have succeeded as solo developers who have been on Maggie noodles for years, okay? And but they don't talk about that. They'll be like, yeah, I did it. And if you say, what did it, what did it take? You'll be like, yeah, man, like I was broke. I was wearing like slippers that were bandaged with tape and I was eating Maggie noodles uh, and you know, so like Maggie, Maggie noodles for a couple of years, I had no money, um, blah, blah, blah. And there are some people who, who got family support. There are some people who've got big loans from family or they have spouses that work, like somebody who's, you know, who took three or four years to be successful and he could do it because his spouse was actually working and getting a good job. But they won't tell you that. Right, like they might not tell you that part. So you think, oh, I can be a solo developer. So that's very important that do not think that everybody can make it as a solo developer. Okay, coming back to my point, teamwork is a superpower. Okay, games are made by teams. Games are made by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people working together. And that's hard. That's hard to learn. That's hard to do because people are weird. Like people are different from us. People, people can be unprofessional. People can be lazy. People can be unreliable. People can be difficult to work with, right? And that's kind of hard to deal with. But if you want to get ahead, if you want to get ahead in your game career, you have to learn to be able to work in a team. Right, which means that you have to have, have good communication skills, you have to have good creative problem solving skills, and your um, your creative conflict resolution has to be good. So, for example, like in, in for example, in in Game of the Maker, I have two teams. Right, one team has a more strong hierarchy because there's someone heading it who's got more experience. Um, uh, dependent, right? Like experienced guys. So, so in that team, um, guys are progressing much faster because there's someone, who, one person in charge, and clear, uh, clear hierarchy. The other team is more democratic. You have more people, more discussion, and obviously that is taking longer, right? So my job as a mentor has been to sit down and say, okay, guys, democracy doesn't work. 
Okay, you have to set roles. Who is a lead designer? Who is a lead programmer? Right? Sort that stuff out. Don't be too democratic. Like, decide stuff. Do it. Meet every Friday. Don't just let the game project slide. So, this is what it takes to make games. And working with people takes time. Like, it's not easy. No, I'm not going to lie. It can be very, very painful. But once you understand how to do it, once you figure that stuff out, it's going to be awesome because the cool thing about games is that um, if, you're, if you're working on a game project and you have someone good, okay, if you have someone good who you have ideas to bounce off and if that person is genuinely uh, good to work with, if one plus one is not going to be two, like it's exponential. When, when an idea goes in a loop, uh, when ideas and concepts go in a loop between people who genuinely care about the game and who get along well together, it something ma like this magic happens. Like I'm, I'm getting you. It's like a game team can be more than the sum of its parts. Once you get that vibe going in your team, crazy stuff happens. Like, do you know in Scandinavia, you have these games, you have these, these game companies that have, like you see their games and you're like, whoa, you got to have 30 people or 40 people making this game. And you go and there'll be like these three guys <laughs> sitting with their laptops in an attic somewhere in, in Copenhagen. And... And that's it, you know? Um, so the crazy thing about making games is that a few people, if they work together, like I've been at dysfunctional studios with 200 people and the output was absolute rubbish, okay? And I've also seen one, two, three person team where people work really well together and they created magic, okay? So truly... Teamwork is a superpower. Don't neglect it. Like, kind of embrace the difficulty of working in a team and suck it up and get along with people. Okay? Um, you will definitely be all the good for it. All right. So teamwork. Any questions there? Any questions? Any? Tell me, how how is it like for you guys to work in a team? I mean, do, like, is it hard? Are you guys thinking like, oh God, working in a team? I don't want to do that. Blah blah blah. I try to work myself. So what what has your what has your experience been like? Do you prefer working by yourself, uh, or do you prefer working in a team? What's tell me about that. Yes, sir. I love people as I'm a UX designer. Works great for me. Awesome stuff. But yeah, for UX, you have to like people. Blender boys, small team. Teamwork is like expect the unexpected. Yeah, because like pe people, uh, things happen to people, right? Like people have problems. They have family problems. They drop out of game projects. Like it's hard. Okay, it's really hard to work. Uh... I know, right? That's the crazy thing. Um, Joyston says that working with Dependent has been a fantastic experience. I've learned so much so fast. Right. Like if you work with the right people and also who know how to teach, you go, you move so fast, right? You, you move so fast. Um, I want to learn as much as possible. So I prefer to work alone. Um, yeah. Like that's kind of a very... Um, that's uh, that's kind of very typical attitude uh, these days, and um, 
you don't you learn a lot from other people man because learning by yourself is okay in some situations but there's a lot of information and a lot of knowledge out there and, and not just knowledge there's a lot of advice you can get from people as to how to do things properly and you won't realize it till you get out there uh where i work the company environment is very good awesome a game dog how to get team members if they expect us to pay and what's the maximum amount i can invest to be safe um you mean to pay to be part of a project like invest in the game is that what you say yeah mm, only problem is that all team members doesn't deliver at time except that everything is great oh yeah like that's a standard thing everybody's not going to deliver in time like 50 yeah 100% of your work is going to be done by 50% of your team members and that's a really good ratio like if 50% of your team members actually do the work then that's awesome like that is great okay that is great and that's that's a good situation okay right now that we talk about teamwork um the next thing i'm going to talk about is failure okay and the next point i want to make is if you want to get ahead if you want to um do well in games is that you have to make friends with failure and what do i mean about what do i mean uh, when it comes to that it means that um and firstly like you have to define failure most of the time failure happens because the expectations were right expectations were wrong so if you are making your first game and you expected to be a millionaire but you only got uh you only got 200 downloads and 10 reviews and you made like enough money for a cup of coffee at starbucks you might think that you have failed but in reality you have not failed that was your game was a success like you finished your game your first game project you finished it you got 200 people to download and play your game and you actually were able to have a cup of coffee at starbucks with the money you earned dude that's awesome you didn't fail you succeeded it's just that your expectations were wrong okay so that's one thing so many times failure happens because our expectations weren't right okay and the thing is the other thing i'm going to say about failure is that expect it expect it in the beginning you you you're probably not going to meet your expectations of what you want to do as fast as you want to do or you want to make your game or you want to get the job that you want like that's probably not going to happen okay another interesting anecdote i know someone who i was at i used to be uh, teaching at backstage pass and there was this guy in my class uh and who were like really into rts is okay and this is way back in this like 20 2010 and he was really really into rts is and i'm like dude where in india are you going to learn how to make a rts like where in india are you going to get a job with a with a company making rts is and he was like yeah and guess what <laughs> there was a, a a studio opened its office upstairs of the game college which was making an rts and he got the job of lead designer of an rts while he was still at college okay and so like i really had to eat some crow there <laughs> but weirdly enough not weirdly enough the game was a massive massive commercial failure um like they spent crore rupees and on their opening day they sold one copy uh so that was really bad and since then like he's kind of gone back to making mobile games okay so um so that's that's something uh that's something about uh success or failure but what i want to say is expect failure be prepared for it but fail cheap 
okay i know a lot of people who invest lots and lots of time and money and effort like i know people who have invested a crore rupees into making a game that they didn't know about they had not, no idea about it and then they came to me and said listen we we spent a crore rupees on a game and it's stuck help us you know i said you shouldn't have spent a crore rupees you should have made a small game for 5 lakh rupees and then if it worked you should have gone on so if you want in the beginning fail cheap don't invest so much into your game and to your career because expect that you are going to fail and when you do fail the most important thing is to be honest with yourself okay do a very honest retrospective so the best game studios the best game studios all have this uh they call it post mortem so at the end of every game project they do a post mortem and they say um what went right what went wrong okay uh, what went right and what went wrong uh with this game if it went right if it did well how come what did we do right and how can we do it again and if it went wrong what went wrong how can we do it and you have to be frank you have to be honest with yourself with your team so if you fail like i know it's a cliche but that failure can really be a stepping stone it can really help you to get ahead if you're honest if you do honest retrospective and say okay that didn't work out why did it work were my expectations wrong was my process wrong what exactly did i do wrong so when you fail when you fail don't just like put it out of your mind say, ah that was a horrible experience no sit down and ask yourself why that happened okay i've done my share of things which i look back and i say oh my god what was i thinking you know but i've done that and i've kind of gone and made changes i've, I've changed myself according to that okay um all right um so make friends with failure and a couple of more things so let's see if there are any questions i have a cup of sip of tea so shida was saying um I made publish two games later as it got removed by Google Play. It's possible that there was a copyright problem. Usually Google Play um uh, they're very strict about copyright stuff. So if you do if you violate somebody else's copyright or something like that, you're going to have um you're going to have serious problems. That's great. Yeah, game jams are great, man. Game jams are absolutely fantastic. Uh to kind of get your game making game up okay next up so how is it so far have i had the the stuff that i'm saying um is it a surprise to you cuz like some of the stuff that i'm saying is kind of harsh could be harsh it could be kind of like destroying your expectations so um tell me talk to me about uh what expectations you have maybe which you think are unreal um so if you can do let me know and if there's something i've said which has kind of changed the way you think um do be uh, do let me know um so vishal is saying i'm pure fresh here i need experience where can i how can i apply for tester is tester good to start career yeah tester is a good job to start with but it because it actually shows you what a game studio is like it shows you um it shows you what how game companies work right so tester is actually a pretty good a uh, pretty good place to start um parendra omnia some people take a failure as did it and they quit in game development how to use this good you have to keep like you have to have that fire inside you you have to like you have to be self motivated nobody is going to come and hold your hand and say listen man it's going to be fine don't worry you're going to be you're going to be you're going to succeed everything's going to be nobody is going to hold your hand 
um, and some of us may have parents who are saying, you see, I told you, you're not going to succeed. Why don't you go and do B.Tech? Why don't you go and join engineering college? Like, look at Sharma Uncle Kapita is doing so well, man. What, do you, what is this game, game, game stuff? Go and do that, no? Like, that is going to happen all the time, okay? Till the time you make it, you have to self-motivate yourself. Like, nobody is going to come and hold your hand and give you a hug, uh, especially, you know, it's COVID time. So, yeah, don't hug people randomly. Uh, so, yeah, that's not going to happen. You have to self-motivate yourself. You have to have that fire from within, um, I'm afraid. Okay, the last thing, uh, second last thing that I'm going to talk about is play the long game. Okay, what do I mean by play the long game? By that, I mean that your timeline for what you're planning to do is going to be longer than you expect. Don't expect to get your gratification and your goals satisfied and done immediately, okay? It may take years. If, if someone asked me at the beginning of my career how long it was going to achieve something, I would have said, yeah, I think I'm going to get this within five years and... I got it, but it took me 10 years. And that is actually quite good, right? A 50%, like, taking double the time is actually not bad. With some people, it never happens. With some people, it takes forever. So remember to play the long game and build your life, build your career, build your expectations with your family and everybody in such a way that you take time to build. Remember one thing. When I say take the long game, it's like, Remember, making games is the highest creative pursuit of the modern age, okay? And I say this for a reason, because to make a game, to make a successful game, to make a good, polished, high-quality game, you have to master pretty much every single creative skill known to humankind, which means that you have to be um, a good designer, you have to be a good artist, you have to be something of a psychologist, you have to be a programmer, you have to you have to know sound, you have to know storytelling, you have to know marketing, you have to be technically adept. So much stuff. There is so much stuff. Never in the history of humankind have has man done what we have been doing for the last 50 years, making video games. We're making universes and we have populating them with players and inviting people in to engage with the universe. And that's crazy if you think about it. But it's, you have to learn, you have to master many, 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 many skills to be a game maker. Okay. And that's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. So play the long game, right? Keep in your mind, you understand that I'm doing something like it's, it's beyond rocket science. Okay. You're doing something that's hard. It's going to take time. But trust your instinct that if you stay there, it's going to happen. Okay? Um, and, yeah. And so the update, of course, is that Josh could make it. Um, yeah. His kind of like, uh, house is kind of threatened to get flooded. He has no power. Last I spoke to him, with his phone was dying and he didn't have power to charge his phone. Uh, Chennai, if anybody knows anybody in Chennai, the situation is bad there. So, fingers crossed, I hope. Uh, anybody who's way down south, Chennai, etc. I think somebody here from south, from Kuwaito. So, I hope that, I hope things are fine. You know, be safe. Uh, be safe, but... Uh, that's, yeah, that's the situation right now in Chennai. So Josh can't make it. However, like I said, he's going to be with us at a live at a day very soon. And we're going to be talking about all that stuff um, that we were supposed to talk about. Okay. Um, so play the long game. And the last thing I'm going to say is um, get a mentor. Okay. Now, it's something that is so important. It's so important that you can't believe it. I'll give you, uh, once again, anecdote time. Uh, Van Gogh Film School, uh, that game project which we were making, there were six of us, no, there were five of us in our team, and we just couldn't 
agree on a game idea okay there were there were four teams and the three teams were done they were done with their concept their they had green lighted their ideas and our team like we couldn't agree because we were just all stubborn and we just wanted to do our own thing there was some guy who was obsessed with mirrors like everything like i want a game with mirrors okay and we were like mirrors and like yeah mirrors and everything he wanted mirrors and i had my own ideas and somebody else had who i made we were just going round and round circles and not able to come up with a game idea and the instructors were like oh guys these guys need help so my mentor andrew uh, awesome guy one of the best game designers i've ever met he 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 kind of pulled me into pull all of us into a room and said okay this is the auditorium and today is the last day uh, where like we're not going to leave this room until you guys come up with a game idea okay and he taught me something really great he taught me this concept called blue sky and we did it like 2 hours we were in there and we came out with a concept that all of us liked okay and like i would never have been able to get that we would never have been able to get through that path so basically what i'm trying to say is that there are skills there are things that people only learn from experience and that too particularly in the game industry when we are young we have this thing man all the information is on the internet right just everything is on youtube there are articles for everything like i can learn this stuff on my own really fast like we have that arrogance which is kind of inbuilt today and the truth is that maybe but it's going to take you 10 times longer and be 10 times more expensive in terms of opportunity cost opportunity cost rather than if there was someone actually telling you this stuff because maybe they made that mistake before they learned it through their experience or the experience of their mentor so for your career i mean for my career i have been very 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 lucky um in the sense that at every stage of my life uh including school and my game career i've had someone who i could look up to actually help me who took the time out to say hey man this is how you do it who taught who gave me the inside information who gave me the tips and tricks that i needed to succeed at what i wanted to do so mentoring that is somebody a person or it could be even be a group that actually passes information on to you directly is very very valuable and remember that your situation is going to be unique your position what you want to achieve what you want to do your circumstances are going to be very very different from the next person right and to find someone it could be it could be somebody at your work like you could join a company and it doesn't even have to be somebody older like i sometimes i've been mentored by people who are actually younger than me and that's also possible but if that if you can find someone who can mentor you in a technical role or a career role in anything absolutely absolutely find someone for that okay and like honestly this is one of the reasons i started game to make up because i saw that there were a lot of people who didn't have access to information they didn't have access to knowledge they didn't have access to someone who was in the game industry working right now and ready to help them because i got that okay so my journey is like i went to a brilliant game school i went to vancouver film school which was crazy like you walk in you should see the workstation you get you should the monitor you get you should see instructors it's awesome but very expensive like i i think i must have including the cost of course and staying in my i must have spent like close to a crore rupees um in in my education uh, especially for making games so i spent a lot of money but it was really worth it it was expensive and i like i i was paying till just a few years ago uh, that financial burden was big but it was really really uh, really really good also the amazing thing was that abroad in canada in the us the way it works is that people working in the game industry are encouraged to go and teach so if i'm at a company and it's 6 o'clock couple of days a week i tell the boss hey it's time for me to go and teach the guys at college um my boss will be like yeah, yeah totally man like i'll cover for you go on do it like 
um, go and go and teach. Like we need you to teach. In India, they'll be like, "Hi, what are you talking, man? Ah, you're earning money on the side, huh? Okay, nothing doing. You sit and you do your work. We have a deadline tomorrow." So, which is a problem because what happens in India is that professionals don't teach. Like professionals, people who make games really don't have the time to go and teach. Like I was at. Uh, I was. We were organizing IGDC, and there was someone who's a pretty successful indie uh, uh, in the indie scene. And we said, "Hey, man, can you come come and give a talk for 45 minutes?" And the guy's like, "I want one 1.5 lakh rupees to give a talk." And we were like, "Okay, not happening," because like we didn't have that budget. You know what I mean? So that sense of giving back to the community, that sense of teaching people, is a problem in India. Like a serious problem, which is one of the reasons which is really holding us back. And Game of Maker, I saw that. Like I saw, like if you see, like if you see my inbox in Instagram, it's insane. Okay, the number of questions I had, people who kind of reach out to me, like I can't answer all the questions. Like, I just don't. Have, I've been doing that all day, and in, you know, on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, people reaching out to me say, "Rahul, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I get it? I want to make gain. My parents are not letting me. Hundreds and hundreds of questions. Okay, and I keep getting them all the time, and it was one of the reasons that like I started. Uh, I started to be able to make up. Right now, I learned the practical way. Right. Learn something, implement it, right? Which is why I am where I am because I move fast because I learned practical stuff. And I I came back to India and I started teaching at the game college. I started teaching at Backstage Pass straight off. Like I joined I joined my work. I started. I used to go. I used to finish off at Game Loft. Uh, it's at like 6 p.m. and then a couple of days a week I used to like hitchhike and I used to go down to Madhapur and teach at Backstage Pass and I used to get home at nine o'clock. It was it was hard but it was awesome. Right back in 2010. And at that time it was great. But over over the years, firstly I saw that the game colleges in india are not run by people who make games like they're not run by game makers they, they they're run by businessmen who don't understand the game industry so if you don't understand the game industry if you don't understand how games are made how are you going to teach it that's a serious problem right and over the years like i started teaching at backstage pass then VIT Bhopal called me. They're like, "Hey Rahul, can you teach here?" So then I had a contract with them. I used to fly to Bhopal once a month. I used to stay there. I used to teach them. And then Shrishti Bangalore called me. So they're like, "Hey Rahul, can you mentor our students?" So I started going there. But I realized that there was a common thing happening in all gaming institutes, and <clears throat> that was that it was very, very academic, right? It meant that it was all theory based. There was no practical teaching of game making right there was no practical teaching of game making and i followed my model in vfs where you learn something and you implement it and, and and a project was the core of the teaching right um and i tried to talk to people man like I, i'm not kidding you 10 years i tried to talk to management i tried to tell you listen guys this is how a game course should be like don't teach people a concept and then ask them sit in an examination hall and then give them marks because they're not going to learn that stuff this is not the way you teach video games <clears throat> and people are like ha 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 and nothing happened right i did this for 10 years and i got frustrated you know and i'm like you know what it's it's really frustrating because i know how the teaching should be done and it's not done like i've been i've been teaching at the best colleges in india game colleges and they don't know how to teach game making and if you guys have attended those game colleges you'll realize what i'm talking about which is why i started gamer to maker okay i said okay what we're going to do is teaching for 10 years means that i know the fundamentals i know how to teach i can teach theory i can teach the process but it's no use to teach the process unless people actually apply it right so um and then i i was looking at online courses okay there are a lot of online courses that's udemy etc etc and not only there are there are courses which are you which are run by uh, uh, professionals online uh, even abroad there are some pretty decent courses right 
most of them some of them can have really good instruction but the practical application as well as the mentoring of projects did not exist so it took me years to come up with a system which i call the game to make a method which is basically a mixture of online learning and actual project experience it means that people come in they learn and they actually apply that learning they form teams they learn concepts they apply those concepts and when they apply those concepts actually in games amazing things happen and at the end of that what happens you made a game you actually learn how to make a game and it's not some little solo game which you made by yourself no it's a game with some complexity there is design complexity there is complexity in programming there is complexity in level design you will really learn stuff and you have something good for your portfolio you have something strong that you can put in your portfolio and not only do i actually help people make the game i help them with their portfolio which means that at the end of it you have a portfolio that you can show to someone and you'll be like okay this is a good game here's a job right um so that is the fundamental of what the gamer to make a course is um and the other interesting thing is that i've been like i've been in the game industry for about uh 13 years now which means i have a network right i've been volunteering for igdc for like five years now and the it's a lot of work um but, but even apart from that i have a network of like, hundreds of people uh in the game industry who are like of of like director and ceo level and cto level and all levels and not only my friends i have students like i have anshul who was like my first batch uh one of my favorite students he was uh, in my first batch at at uh, at backstage pass and now he is a programmer at ea in seattle right um and like he says you know rahul i'd like to you know i'd be happy to mentor people in your course right and then there's josh who could make it fortunately he's my batch mini batch be one batch junior to me and he saw my course and's like dude totally let's do this i'd love to mentor you guys um then i have 3d artists who come in i have a problem my team has a problem so i call in 3d i say hey somebody's having a problem with a particular model can you teach them this technique etc right so which means that uh in the game to make a course you your project my student projects actually have support from people who are in the industry right now working who are coming in their spare time and helping you guys out giving knowledge giving information giving mentoring as to how to actually get ahead and i'm lucky that i have this network um and like i'll be honest i have a good job okay i earn really well and like i don't need to do this like i need to stay up at 2 o'clock at night uh, you know making a course i could be watching netflix but like i really have this deep sense that we need to make it in india like we are really underachievers in the indian game industry like we have so much potential we could be making crazy games man we have so much talent so much passion here but there's no one to teach there's no one to guide right that's a serious problem and this is the serious problem that i have been trying to overcome um with game of maker okay now i'm going to kind of show you a little i have actually have a nice video um which is one of my one of the guys from my batch give me a second before i joined the course uh, all i had was some programming knowledge and that's it basically i 
had very little knowledge about game development. I always used to play a lot of games since I was a kid. So in that sense, I have a very good understanding of game genres, what's fun about the different types of games that I'm familiar with. But in regards to game development, I knew almost nothing basically. The main thing that has changed for me since I joined the course, uh, I kind I found a sense of belonging, so to speak. Uh, like uh, until now, I kind of had no idea what I was doing with my life, and uh, I started doing this course because I just heard of it and I thought, okay, you know, maybe I'll try it. And uh, turns out that uh, I feel very familiar, even though I'm in a place where uh, I'm learning a lot of new things. And it's kind of scary in many ways, but at the same time, I feel like I'm right where I should be. I think the the most rewarding experience so far from the Gamer to Maker course that I had is uh, working with the team and uh, going through the process of reproducing a game, all their game design stuff. I think that was uh, some of the most interesting things I had to do in the course so far. Meeting uh, the other people in the Gamer to Maker course, uh, the Spartans, uh, I met a bunch of different people. We are all uh, the one thing that that's common about us, obviously, is we want to make games and be successful in uh, with a game career. But uh, I met a lot of different people who have very different ways of thinking about games and what is fun and that kind of stuff. And uh, I learned a lot about other people's perspectives, which I might meet with the gamer to make a course. I think uh, this is probably one of the best ways to start learning about games in India, as far as I know. Because uh, the community that you meet, and uh, obviously our mentor Rahul Sagal, it's, uh, it's probably the best mentor you can have. So we are making a 2D top-down fighting game. It was initially meant to be a side-scrolling game, but uh, we changed that idea because it was out of scope. And uh, the process was, uh, it was kind of painful for some of us. Uh, the original concept is almost, uh, it's completely different from what it is now. So we went through the process of changing our project uh, very heavily, very significantly. And uh, that was pretty, that was kind of a hard experience, but it was a very good learning experience. And uh, so right now we are pretty excited to be making a game. At least I am very excited to be making a game because this is my first game project and uh, I'm making it with uh, some people who are already experienced and I'm learning a lot from them as well as from the course lessons and uh, from the mentor as well. I think this course is a place where you can meet a bunch of like-minded people and yet have a lot, lot to learn from them. The most important thing is the community that you meet, that, that you are with. The contacts you can make, the network you can build. And uh, this place is a great place. This course is a great place to do that. All right. So that was Anirudh. And um, the nice thing is that, like, it's really nice to have passionate people who you're working with and actually getting stuff done. It's a great pleasure. Like it's kind of hard, you know, doing a day job and, and I have four kids and, and kind of managing that stuff, but I really, really enjoy it. I really enjoy, I'm really enjoying, this is an experiment that started uh, maybe a year ago. And the truth is that like I'm really enjoying it and it's actually getting results because I started doing something new which had not been done before. And <clears throat> I'm happy to say it's been going really well. Like you saw the painter uh, and his team actually making a game. Um, and even the other game team is doing really well. The project is coming and I'm absolutely, I'm so, so happy. Okay, now kind of take a step back. Where I'm going to kind of share something with you that uh, I saw recently and someone sent me this message and it was like really haunting uh haunting to see this so uh, this is someone who who actually uh who actually went and had a really bad experience in uh who had a really uh bad experience in uh in college he went to a game college and I got this message from him that he did a PCA in game development and I'm, I'm obviously blacked out the place and he paid four and a half lakh rupees uh, and literally learned nothing. 
you know what i mean and like he says i'm not i'm not a rich family i don't really have a lot of money but i kind of whatever money i have i spend on this course and essentially my parents are like you know you take it all our money and you got nothing to show for it and that's like a horrible horrible situation to be in and that was like it was really horrible to uh, to hear that do you know what i mean and like when it comes to quality of learning they promise a lot um but like <laughs> there's only one teacher and like he says my knowledge is is more than my teacher you know what i mean so that was like that was really sad um to see and this is one of the message i got long time ago and that was actually one of the inspiration that i had uh for starting the course um right now the next thing i'm going to show you guys is uh i have uh ash i don't know if it's ash is here so i asked i i was i asked ash if he could please uh you know share his experience of the course and he he happily agreed okay and so i'm going to show you that now and you can read it so he said that the project has taken okay wait wait i need to pause it hang on okay um so he says i haven't personally taken up any online game course and i feel that's a beauty there aren't many strong enough to be well known and popular okay i need to pause it's just running okay so you can kind of see um he says that like it's definitely a chapter he look back to with the first attempt at learning game design turned out to be a remarkable experience um so yeah i mean i'm really happy i'm really really happy with uh the way the course is going and people are happy you know it's it's like my my spartans and i like to call them they are they are my students and we have weekly meetups uh and it's absolutely fantastic right now uh i also wanted to share some my gdd but i don't have time actually we kind of getting on to it so what i will say now uh at this point is now you you might have questions about how long the course is and if you do have any questions about it you know keep keep putting it uh pick keep putting it in the chat let me let me read some of the messages let me catch up um so jinesh is saying is backstage pass a good college for game development i'm going to take admission there i mean, i was teaching there at backstage pass for for 10 years okay and i stopped because it was not delivering uh what it meant to be for the price right so which is why i stopped there so i like i don't want to say anything bad about them but i not sure if i would recommend them okay um yeah uh, game it was the exactly same thing happened to me that's why i am down now mostly it happens to the engineering college though it it happens in all colleges right the gaming is there's a real lack of of competence in teaching gaming okay now so the question is um now if you're going to be learning how to make video games as i mentioned any course in the us or canada is going to be actually going there is going to be nothing less than 50 lakhs a decent course is going to be 50 lakhs and i'm not even talking about like i'm not even talking about the cost of living i'm just talking about the tuition fees okay and the way it is with covid and the way it is with employment and work visas it's getting more and more hard to especially go there like but however if you have the money and if you have rich parents and you have a ton of money that's great right to go to vfs or digipen is is awesome right Uh, and to work abroad is fantastic it's an amazing experience to work abroad man um so do that however if you if you don't have that kind of money and time what about india so uh, a diploma in india uh for a year costs i think 1.5 lakhs to 1.7 lakhs and which means that you have people teaching you kind of stuff which honestly you can learn online from youtube videos um and also no game project like even the diplomas degree courses 
in game colleges in India don't have game projects, right? Mm-hmm. Leave alone diplomas. Diplomas really, really don't have any game project. And the quality of teaching is poor. And these fees are 1.5 lakhs. And it's not even structured for online learning, right? Now, the structure of the gamer to make a course is such that it fits in with anything you guys are doing, right? It is a few hours a week online and on Discord and on Zoom. And it fits in with whatever situation you are, whether you're in school, whether you're in college, whether you're working, whatever situation you are and whatever role you want, you can be a part of the Gamer to Make a Program, okay? And like, I have people in my course, okay? I have people in Gamer to Make a right now, they've tried everything. Like I have people who have done a degree and who have come in here after doing a degree. I have people who have finished a diploma in game making and they've come into that course and I'm like, oh my God, this was not their diploma. I have people who've done one, two, five, 10 online courses, Udemy courses, and they didn't find that value. They've come in here, okay? Um, and, And they come here and they're amazed because they have value. Okay, they have value. They're learning, they're making games, they have, they're building a community, they're building a portfolio. Okay, so um, I have, uh, just give me a sec. I have some slides here. Right, so the, um, that's one thing. So um, I have a couple of programs. I have, firstly, most, the main program is a, the, the game to make a game design production course, which is essentially a program in which you will learn how to make video games through a game project, okay? Which means that you have, Uh, online class modules, which you can watch at your own leisure. You have live masterclass, right? Live masterclasses happen happen every week. They happen um, once in a while. So coaching classes happen every week and the masterclasses happen depending on the situation. For example, there are some topics which we go really deep into. Last, I think a month ago, we had a class which was about um, which was about operant conditioning. So operant conditioning is essentially when you create rewards that keep players coming back. It's a very deep topic. And like, I don't even have, like, I was not taught that in BFS. It's something that I've learned by myself and through my mentors. And that's something that I, I teach over there. Okay. And... Um, the next thing you get is that you get, there's an exclusive area on the Discord server, which you get access to, which means that you can ask personal doubts um, of the mentors. And you also have focus groups there, which can help you with specific things like marketing and which can help you with stuff like uh, your own game project. Okay. If you have a game project and you're stuck, and you need someone to help with concept art or programming or 3D, etc. you can get help with that, okay? Um, the one thing I definitely want to say, uh, the one thing I want to say to people is that, let me tell you what it is not. Um, G2M is not a tools course, okay? So for example, if you want me to teach you how to use Unity, or if you want to be taught how to use Unreal, etc., that's not taught in Game to Maker. Because quite honestly, you can learn specific things. Like you can learn how to use Unity, or you can learn how to use uh, Unreal from watching free videos. The question is, what do you actually do with those tools? Like learning tools is not a problem these days. The problem is knowing how to do it. Okay, so Vedant is asking, is G2M primarily a game design course or are there other aspects such as programming and art taught as well? So that's a very, very good question. And so Gamer to Maker, it's called the Gamer to Maker Design and production course. So in here, you will be taught the basics of 
game design and production and game design and production is something that everyone needs to even if you're a programmer or if you're an artist right if you're an artist you need to know that stuff like you can't be a programmer or a game artist who has no idea about game design and production you need to be involved with the process of making games right now if you want to go deeper into game design you can attend the master classes but if you're a programmer or if you're an artist you will have a team you will have a project that you can work on right and in that project you will be doing whatever you want to do you will be doing programming and you will be doing art if you need help with something specific we have mentoring classes for example a programming mentor for example the other day we had something in which we were trying to decide whether we're going to go with a multiplayer game or single player game so i told my team guys listen if you guys going to go with multiplayer it's higher in scope it's going to be more difficult but that's no problem if you're going to go with multiplayer let me know and i will have a mentor come in specifically to teach you multiplayer programming and help you out with that right ultimately they decided you know what multiplayer is too much let's go with single player right the other day uh, one of my teams was having problems kind of like making the art for a game um yeah, the concept art and coming up with like the art look so i booked a call with the concept artist uh harshini is is my former student she's actually working with me she's a concept artist she's also a mentor for the course i booked a call that same night and she was with them for one hour at night we were sitting down on discord uh we had a call and she helped them out with whatever help they needed and then they could move forward uh another instance somebody from one uh had a very specific thing they wanted to do with 3D which they were not finding a solution for uh on the internet so once again i knew someone who was pretty good uh at 3D i i i called him up hey man can you help out he got the phone number of this guy the guys got in touch and he helped him to the best that he could so that's what it is uh if you are a programmer or if you are an artist right you will be part of a game project and that is where like i said the only way to learn how to make video games whether you're an artist or whether you're a programmer or whether you're a designer is to actually make video games right so that is what the gamer to make a course is all about and um so now if you're asking how much it costs the cost of the game to make a course is 29999 is 29999 rupees and the game to make a course is open now i i um i've changed my website uh, and everything i had old website uh, so the new website is actually under construction um but the course page is actually available and i have something really really special it's uh it's black friday you know and my wife tells me look it's like if you're going to be uh you at basically new batch is starting now the first batch is doing really well um and which is why i'm taking the next step now so the first batch is the spartans origin batch and these guys are doing really well i'm very very happy with their progress and which means that i'm starting second batch now and the second batch is starting now within the next uh within the next 5 days and i have like a black friday offer which i'm giving so i have this is the game design and production program and i also have a mentoring program right it's called the spartan mentoring program uh hang on a second while i i show you the slides right so this is the spartan mentoring program uh which is essentially spartan mentoring program is not really launched yet is going to be launching in the future this is actually separate from the gamer to make a 
design and production program. This one is more mentoring focused. So as such, there is no game project in this, but this is more focused towards people who are a little bit more senior, a little bit more experienced, and who want specific guidance for their career, people who want specific guidance. Say, suppose you have your own game project uh, that you want help with. You want help with stuff like, like you know, it, you want you want basically you want access to the game industry to veterans you know you want feedback for your project uh, you want to find collaborators for your project you want the game marketing you want to build your personal brand um, you know you want to learn how to kind of pass tests do interviews build your portfolio um, if you want like if you want to work abroad if you want to study abroad if you want to get a job abroad how do you do that how do you find that path like how do you do job salary negotiation like there's no one who teaches how to teach you how to negotiate for a great salary right um and also it's not just about that it's possible at some point you guys are going to um like you you guys are going to be um like okay i'm earning one lakh rupees but what next like how do i go to the next level right um, so the, in this mentoring club in, in this mentoring program all that stuff discovered okay also i have in the mentoring program i have focus groups the focus groups are basically they are programming art and design focus groups so if you're a part of that focus group you have a specific channel there and that's where you can take your specific uh uh, skills in that field the next level because you'll have mentoring from me and you'll have mentoring from people who are specific to that particular field so this is a mentoring program which is actually separate okay and so what's happening right now is that and also this is not a program which is open Okay, so the mentoring program is actually a closed program, which is by application only. Because I'll be honest with you, that I don't have so much time. Okay, I have, uh, you know, I like to have a job, I have a day job, I have four kids, so much stuff going on. So I can't, I'm not in a position where I can deal with people who are not focused and who waste my time. So for the mentoring program, the mentoring program is going to be more me and my team of mentors actually working very closely with the people in the mentoring program. And it's by invite only. So like you people can't just walk in and say, here's my money. I'm a part of this program. So you actually have to apply for it. You actually have to apply for the mentoring program and there are a lot of people who i know and i'm not going to accept because i don't have the time um some people are not ready like there are some people who are ready for the mentoring program um and there are some people who who may not be ready for the mentoring program and not going to accept them so the mentoring program is for selection only and for black friday now i'm giving the mentoring program away for free along with the game design program right so if you if you get the course if you get the game and make a game design production course right but the thing is uh you actually have to do the game design production course right like you actually have to do it you have to make the game uh and you will have access to the mentoring program for free which is um which is going to be basically like you're getting it at, uh, you're getting it for free. It's going to be expensive. Like it's going to be maybe a half or, you know, I haven't decided the price exactly, but it's not going to be cheap. And you're getting it for free along with the game to make a course right now. Okay. So, um, any questions, any questions we have, I think five minutes left. Uh, can this uh, so can this course boost my team working skill programmer success career? Dude, that's exactly what this course is meant for. Like a lot of people are working on their own. They're working on solo projects. Okay, they're like I'm making. I see your project. Okay, I see you guys posting on my Discord server, and I'm like, okay, this is cool, but this is not going to get you a job because you need to be part of complex course. Like you saw, you you saw the course. Uh, you you saw the game that Depender is making. Like, that's the kind of game that if you have in your portfolio, you're going to get a job. Like, you're going to get a job for sure. But that's not a game that you can make by yourself. 
And this is the power of Game of Maker because you have a team, you have people, you're going to have someone more experienced than you, you're going to have people guiding you, you're not going to be on your own floundering around the internet, posting on random Discord servers, please play my game, please give me my feedback. You'll have a community, you'll have buddies, you'll have a batch, right? You'll have someone who has your back. The Game of Maker is about that. It's about like, you know, it's about getting your back. Okay. Um, so, like I said, now, but this is uh, this offer is of five days. Okay. In the sense that the course is open now. Um, I will send you a link to the course. It's 29, uh, 29,999. And I'll send you the link to anybody who's interested. And for the next five days, Till the second, okay. I'm doing it till the second because I know some people actually, uh, some people like parents, etc., get paid on the first or second. So it's open till the second, and till the second, um, if you buy it, if you enroll for the game to make a design production course, you will be getting the mentoring program for free. Okay, but. It's like it only works if you finish the course. Like don't be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get the metric program. It only works because it, it's attached to the course. Okay. And even after that, once it opens up for everybody, it'll be by invitation only. But if you buy the program, you get this for free. Okay. Um, yeah. So any any questions, guys? Let me know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop a link here. Okay. Give me a second. any questions guys hit me also uh remember that i'm on tonight so yeah here it is. so questions uh how much duration for this course so see the thing is that um the course is it's it's up to you, right? It's completely up to you how long you take. But in my promise to you is, if you do the course, if you if you follow my instructions, if you follow the course, if you do it, be a professional game maker in one year. That's my promise. Okay, that's my promise. One year. So you have to finish the course. You have to do the project. You have to make portfolio. And I'll give you, like the community will give you all the support you want. But up to one year is what you need to like do the classes, do your, do the project, get your portfolio ready, get prepared for your LinkedIn, your interviews, your bio, learn about game careers, do all that stuff. In one year, you'll be ready. You'll be a professional. But trust me, this one thing, you have to do the work. Okay. Uh, you have to actually do the work in this course. It's not like you turn up and you bunk classes uh, because trust me, the, the batch is gonna be depending on you. Your team is gonna be depending on you to actually make this game, okay? So you can't like, you can't just like say, okay, I'm gonna buy this course and I'm gonna chill out at home. So it's like, you can do it but in your spare time but it means you actually have to put in the effort and you have to be part of a team. Like, it's going to be awesome, but you're going to have to do the work, okay? Um, yeah, so Game Inter, uh, when will the next batch be? I don't know. Uh, I don't know when the next batch is going to be, to be honest with you. Like, it's, I have one batch with release. Uh, this is the second batch, uh, which is going out. And, and it depends on my life, right? Like, I have stuff going on. So I'm, I'm also doing a... Uh, like I study, like I love to study. I'm actually doing a, a kind of like a kind of MBA from Berkeley in the US, which means that I have a lot of studies. I have to travel to the US uh, a lot next year. So I don't know when the next batch is going to be. So I, I can't promise that. I know I've actually taken out time to start a batch now because it takes a lot from me to run the batch. It means like there's, there's a lot on my mind. I have to like answer messages. I have to mentor these guys. I have to look at their projects. I have to be involved with them. Um, so it takes a lot from me. And yeah, I, I can't keep doing that. 
Okay, so that's it. So also, um, there are, so the link is here. Do have a look at it. And yeah, so tonight, 9 p.m., guys, uh, tonight, 9 p.m., I'm going to be there on Discord. Um, okay, Kurush is asking, so if I purchase G2F course, will I be doing artistic work or other work like programming? No, no, no. See, you are going to be doing work as an artist, right? You will, see, you'll be understanding the fundamentals of game design because whether you're an artist or whether you're a programmer, you need to understand the fundamentals of how games are made, the process of making games, right? Game design is not just for game designers. Like, you don't have to go deep into game design, but you have to understand the fundamentals of designing games and the process. That's why it's called design and production goes, right? In the project, you will be doing art. Like, you will be creating art for your own game. You're not going to be doing programming. You're going to be doing art for your own game project. Okay? And then you're going to be creating the art and you're going to be showcasing your art and your game as your portfolio. Like, I didn't just make some random art for putting on a website. This is my game. I made the art for this game. Okay? And that's what really counts. Okay? So this is the answer to Kurush. Um... Uh, I am ready to take your course, but firstly, I want degree to be in safer side. Like you can do a degree, you you need to do. You probably need to do a degree. Okay, you can do B Tech, you can do BFA, you can make your dad happy. You can like Papa, which course do you want me to do? You right? Yeah, yeah. So I I have, I have like half the people in my batch are B Tech. Yeah, half the people in my batch are B techs. Like you can do a B tech, you can make your dad happy. You can say, Papa, don't worry, I'll I'll do B tech, BFA, MFA, whatever you want, or M M Phil or PhD. You know, I'll do whatever. And this is something you can do on the side. It won't interfere with your job. It won't interfere with your course or studies or anything. And yes, this is a fully online course. Um, this is a fully online course. So let me see. I'm gonna kind of like. Uh, let me sh see if I can share my Discord server just to kind of show you uh, show you what it's like. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, this is the game to make a Discord server. Okay. This is the Discord server, and this is the Spartans Arena, right? This is uh, this is where we have our announcements. This is where we have our chat, and like for module one, you have like you can submit your doubts here. You can submit your doubts for each module, and they'll be answered. You submit, you submit your, uh, you submit your assignments here, right? Uh, in this thread, and then you have here you have the the projects, right? So after about three months or so, you're going to be actually making some projects. So this, there are two games which are being made right now. You saw Tale of Honor, which is which is the game which is being made by uh, Dependor. So this is this is the chat. So uh, each each uh, team they have a voice channel. They can meet. They can have their meetings. Uh, and like if you, I think that they even have uh, their game design documents uh, somewhere here. Now uh, I know Arise has their game design document somewhere. I can even open the GTD unless it's yeah. I don't think it's too much of a secret. So yeah, this is their chat. This is what they do. Um, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so yeah. To kind of give you an idea of how the course is conducted, so you have uh, you have online classes on a platform which you go and do, and then your doubts etc. is going to be on Discord, and then there are Zoom calls which happen regularly in which I you must have seen them. Uh, you must have seen the Zoom calls uh, in the video which was Anirudh talking. So those are Zoom calls, mentoring calls which happen regularly. Okay. So all right, guys. I have. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can answer one last question. All right. And then I'm kind of done. So let's see any other questions. Is this fully on? If somebody with intermediate programming better to take the course, beginner skill person, it will help and continue one project. So Vedant, uh, the question is that with somebody with intermediate programming skills, the thing is like, if you are at a beginner level, 
uh, if you're at a beginner level, that's actually not a bad place to start because you you can learn about the design and you can learn about the production and side by side as you're learning programming skills as you're improving you'll learn how to actually implement them and they're going to be batch mates right you, in your batch you're going to have people who are more senior than you so it, rather than just like going on youtube and learning you're actually going to have batch mates who will be able to help you to um help you to actually uh, improve it Okay. Help help you with your skills. Uh, so, yeah, and there could be mentors. Like mentors are going to help you with your programming and improve. So your the speed of your improving, the speed of your improvement uh, is going to be much faster if you are in the course because you'll have mentors, you'll have seniors, you'll have people people helping. If you have a specific question, you don't have to spend one hour searching on YouTube for a video that's going to solve your problem. You can just go on the server and say, hey guys, I'm having this problem. And someone more senior, your batch mate or a mentor can say, hey man, like I think this is this is a way to uh, kind of sort it out. So, I mean, I have, go, go on the Discord server. If you're new here, go on the game and make a Discord server. Even if you are not part of the course, you can go and I have a free area where once in a while, some mentors will come and then answer some questions. Uh, so you can actually go and see the quality uh, of of their answers, etc. Like they're really high high quality uh, people. Okay. So once again, guys, I'm gonna go now. But remember, 9 p.m. Uh, 9 p.m. There is a specific channel which I have created. Um, in the so there is a there is a uh, heading called Game It to Make a Nitro. Oh, there are actually some questions here. Interesting. Yeah, I'll answer those tonight. So nine o'clock, I'm gonna put put the kids to bed, hopefully, uh, in time, and I'll be here at nine o'clock. All right, and at nine o'clock, I will be I'll be hang out. You have some questions, we'll chit chat. Uh, so I'll see you guys at nine. And look, honestly, whether you're gonna get the course or not, this is not about that. Okay, I really hope that if you were at Nitro today. I really hope that you got some value, okay? I really hope that you learned something and that's what this is about. Like this is about building a community. This is about making awesome games. So I hope you got some value from here and it was good to hang out with you guys. Thank you for your question. Thank you for participating. And for those who are interested, I will see you guys on Discord at 9 p.m. Take care. Have an awesome Saturday night. Have an awesome Sunday. Uh, see you guys later. Let's go.